Okay, what's up, YouTube? Let me go ahead and pull y'all up real quick. Got a good show today. We should have a good one today. All right, we going. We live. We live. Y'all can hear me? We all good? We all good? Get the chat going. Make sure y'all hit that like button when y'all coming in. Interesting show today. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. Let's go ahead and get to it. For those who do not know, I did a live stream last week and a lady, okay, a woman by the name of Nyla came on, spoke a lot of truths, a lot of dangerous truths, all right, things that people don't want you to hear, but it's necessary to say these are the conversations that have to be had for there to be progress. These are the hard conversations, but the ones that have to be had for progress, okay, so um I really want to appreciate before we come on, I want everybody to be respectful to Nyla um, for all the people and all the women and all the haters out there, mostly the women. It was women and they're hating on Nyla for some reason, but they were saying she was she was a white lady. She might be uh, they were saying she's not from the country. They were saying, oh, she's not a parent. She's not married. This and this and that. I have confirmed we have spoken on a couple of occasions now. Nyla is legit. Her ideas are completely thorough. Um, she is indeed married. She is indeed a black woman with natural hair and she has black children. So for anybody that's out there trying to use that to deflect from the, from a good argument. Yeah, that's, that's out the window. So, uh, Nyla, are, are you, are you on now? Yes, sir. I'm here. All right. Just making sure you in. just making sure you in. Um, on the last show, you said some things, uh, you were talking about the nature of women. Okay. And, and, and how a lot of men, how a lot of men, don't really understand how bad it is. And even I was caught off guard when you talked about just how bad it was in your experience. So I wanted you to dive into it a little bit in terms of how you feel or, or what is the nature of women in 2021? Well, in two, uh, uh, 2021, I would have to say the modern woman is extremely deceptive. Mm. And I would say she's so intensely deceptive that she deceives herself first before she wow. even deceives others. And, and that's the part that's really dangerous, because if you have a person that knows they're being deceptive, there's something you can do about that. But the modern day woman, she doesn't even know that she's being deceptive. And we see and we see this in, uh, in, in many different examples of how deceptive they are. We obviously see that in, uh, you know, you, you have, you see the weaves and the, and, you know, the makeup and, and the lashes. And is it okay if I uh, mention Kevin Samuel's show? Oh, you can mention anything you want to. This is, <laughs> this is the Nyla takeover for anybody. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the Nyla takeover. We're going to let her do what she got to do. I had a lot of backlash for even questioning some of the things you were saying last time. <laughs> so I want to let you, I want to let you dive in, mention anything you want to mention, go where you want to go. I'll help narrate. I'll help, you know, give, you know, some questions to, to direct the thing where we're going. But other than that, I'm gonna let you go ahead and, and do what you want to do. Got it. So one thing that I noticed in watching his show, that many of the women would call in and you know, without a doubt, they were giving themselves nines and tens. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and he would look like he was shocked. But the thing of it is, these women, they truly believe this. And so that's where I'm going with the deception in a woman's mind. She lies to herself. These right. women believe this when they put on that that fake hair and them lashes and their warped mind. They really, truly believe that this is what they look like. And another way that um, that I've I've noticed and, and, and that that you see the evidence of this. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the concept of uh, if I if I can remember the, the concept of a white standard of beauty. Have you heard yeah, oh that yeah. before? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you. I'll ask you a question. Who do you hear talking about the white standard of beauty? No, oh, anytime I hear people talking about Eurocentric ideas of beauty, yes. it's always black people. Uh, yes, but I'm going to say specifically white women. To be honest with you, oh. I don't really hear black men talking about the white standard of beauty when you really think about it. Uh, first, you don't hear white women and white people saying that we are the standard of beauty. You don't hear them saying that. You know what I'm saying? 
me personally. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. If you're saying in terms of, yeah, I get where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I don't, I don't, don't really hear you, black. You don't necessarily yet. hear, uh, yeah, you don't hear white people say, yeah, we're we're the standard. Yeah, I get where you're going. Yeah, that's true. We're the most, yeah. beautiful. We're the most wonderful. True. You don't hear them saying that. And to be honest with you, I don't know that I've ever heard a man. Okay, but I, okay. Can I make one thing clear before we talk about there's a difference between a man and a beta simp? Two totally different things. I never I couldn't hear agree with you anymore. Yeah, when I'm saying man, I'm talking about a, a, a straight, normal alpha, a man. I never hear a man talk about a white standard of beauty. This is something, this idea was something that was created by the black woman. This white standard of beauty. And the reason why they do that, because in the mind of a black woman, the white woman in her mind is the standard of beauty in her mind. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Um, I mean, it's ref it's reflected in in some of our culture. I ain't gonna lie to you. You see people. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, exactly what you was talking about. The fake, especially with the fake hair. We we want to cry cultural appropriation all day. Right. And it's usually black Twitter. And you know who's on black Twitter is mostly black women. And this isn't, by the way, me and Nyla, she is a black woman and I'm married to black women. So this is not to attack black women, but we're going to talk about all. some of these tough topics because these this is the truth. It is what it is. You want to talk about cultural appropriation, but you walking around with 21 inch blonde hair in your head. Yaki, yaki or right. whatever it's called or, you know, whatever, whatever the different names are. But what I'm saying this is to say this, the black woman hollers about a white standard of beauty, but you're the only one that's saying that it's the standard. The right. black woman is saying that. And so in, in my belief, in my dealings with, with women and black women, I honestly believe that the black woman hates her own image. Mm. Where do you, where do you think that comes from? Do you think that is something that is just from, I would assume it's uh, in terms of nature versus nurture, I'm assuming it's nurture and it's an influence by society. Do you think that that's an influence of society or do you think it's just an insecurity? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think, well, first off, the way we got here in 2021, a lot of um, black women have learned this from their mothers um, to hate themselves. And, and here is where I can kind of tell a little bit of my story and what happened to me. Um, Please so do. Okay, so um, I was born in 1977, and I could tell you that I didn't see uh, what my full head of hair looked like until I was a, a grown adult. Um, a lot of women in my age group knows this story. We know about the press and comb, right? Mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. My, my, th this is going to get pretty deep. So um, in that day and age, like the 80s and 90s, it was a very bad thing to show your natural hair texture. And the reason why I'm saying this is from a woman, my father, he wanted all of us girls to have natural hair. He wanted our hair to be natural, but my mother insisted that our hair was constantly pressed, pressed and straightened. And this is how deep it gets. And I'm gonna tell a little story here. I grew up in California, blocks from the beach, blocks from the beach. And I can tell you right now, I do not know how to swim. <laughs> and the reason why, and that's that's terrible, the reason why I do not know how to swim and many black people do not know how to swim is because we were not allowed uh, water to touch our hair. Because wow. if water touched yeah, that's... pressed hair, it would revert back to its kinky state. And the black mother didn't want that because it was too much trouble to deal with our head of hair. So um, she pressed my hair and then she took me to a shop where her name was Odessa Grant, an older lady who was supposed to be putting knowledge and wisdom into me. She pressed my hair. My mother one day told me that our hair was a curse. My mother told me this. White people did not tell me this. My mother told me this, that our hair was a curse because of its kinkiness and our hair is very unique. And so, but back then you couldn't show it. So basically, that's poor. I, I kind of grew out of that. And I now I, I, you saw my hair. So you know that my hair is natural now. Yeah, absolutely. But, but the problem is, when that is put into a child's head, we grow up thinking that our hair is bad. I'm not alone in this. You have you have you had mothers pressing their daughter's hair. You had mothers putting that chemical, uh, the relaxing chemicals, which are cancer causing into our hair, causing their hair to thin out and to bald. My mother and my sister both are completely bald. They'll never have hair again because of the things that we put our hair through. Wow. And, here, and here's where the deceit of a woman comes in. You hear women say, oh, we wear weave because it's a protective style and we're protecting our hair. That is, a, that is such a lie. 
what are you protecting your hair from? The light, <laughs> the air, and, the sun. And you know, no, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to. You know, cause you know, last time people wouldn't have. Now I tried to. I tried to. Uh, you know, intervene and people weren't having it. They want to hear you talk. So I do want to allow you to talk, but now that you say that, and I, I'm going to put up a poll after this. So anybody that's in the live, make sure y'all stick around for the poll. Y'all probably see it on your timeline. But when I have conversations with black men, typically speaking, it is them who say they like natural hair, black Definitely. men like natural hair. Um, and, and when, I speak to white guys that like black women, use them to be lighter skin. So I'm like, you like a white girl with a tan is what it is because they say they want them lighter skin with straight hair. And that's 10, that, that tends to be what white guys who date black women want, not what black men want. If, if I'm going off my anecdotal evidence, you know what I mean? I'm going to say this and here and this, and again, we're kind of focusing on the nature of a woman. Here's the thing about a woman. Let's just say it's absolutely true that black women, you know, dark skin, kinky hair. And as you see, I have kinky hair. Let's say that we are not the standard of beauty. OK, let's say that that is fat. We figured it out. We did tests. We are not the standard. But here's the thing about the mind of a woman, black, white or any other race. A, you, we have seen dark skinned black women, kinky haired black women with husbands and children. Right. Mm. Got a whole continent of them. The thing about the modern day westernized woman, oh, we don't just want one man. We want the attention of the men. Because if you are a dark skinned woman and you're fit, you're friendly, <laughs> you, 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 you put a smile on the face, oh, you can get a man, but that's not enough for us. We want to be the standard. And so right. that's where the hatred in a black woman's heart for, the, for and the desire to be white is we want to be the standard. We want all the men lusting after us. We're not happy with finding just that one man. We want them lusting after us. So that's why they want to put on the weave and, and, and all these crazy things because we want to be lusted after. We're not satisfied with our one man that wants us. You see what I mean? Do you think, do you think that's natural for all women to want Absolutely. more male attention or as much male attention as they can get? Or Absolutely. Absolutely. But the thing of it is we're in America and here we're just 13 percent of the population. Right. So obviously so that that I mean, that's just reality. We're only 13 percent and we do look unique. We don't we have hair like that. No other race has. We talk about white right. people, but but Asian. It's beautiful. Women, it truly yeah, is. It's, it's beautiful. Well, to be honest with you, the hair that that black women buy is not from white people. They're from getting India. Majority, exactly. They're getting the majority of their hair from India. So pretty much every other race has this type of hair. Ours is extremely unique. And so so that's where they're getting the hair from. We are different. And so but the way I see it, um, yes, our hair is unique. Yes, it's different. But but guess what? Look at the Asians. Don't they have unique eyes? Asians have yeah. unique eyes and you do have some Asians that want to change it, but that's the way they look. And that's the amazingness of our creator. And that's how I learned to embrace myself. I'm unique. You know what I mean? Uh, my hair is different, but once we learn to do our hair, it's absolutely beautiful. It is. I'm trying it's to beautiful. tell you. And, and you know, now that you went down kind of talking about wanting more male attention, you look at cases like uh, Aisha Curry and her, you know, being with oh, yes. the, a, 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 Come on now, it's, it's Steph Curry. Like, how, if you can't please a woman, you Steph Curry. How well, you expect a regular man on forty k to be able to to keep a woman entertained enough to where she want to stick around? You know what I mean? Because let, let's just be completely honest about this. And and this is kind of going down the same topic because you you talk about um, black women wanting. Uh, a lot of attention and, and sexual attention from everyone around them. And you look at uh, the who consumes the most social media, specifically Instagram uh, and Twitter, it's, it's black women. Yeah. Um, when you look at like hypergamy and I, and I tell people this all the time, what we're going through right now seems to be a shift in, in people being greedy because in most places in America, now 40, 42 K, which is what the average black man makes ain't a ton, but in most places in America, you can do okay with 42K if you're, if you're living at your means or below your means. You can do okay with 42K. So the idea that black men don't have enough to provide and that's why, you know, black women don't want to submit and, and this is that, that was always out the window to me. And I always found that a little weird because back in the, you know, when we didn't have, when we had less even before, because a lot of people like to go, oh, what are, you know, slave, this is, well, during that time, we were the highest married. 
You know, I'm you, you get what I'm saying? So Absolutely. it's not that we lack money or resources to protect and provide for black women. It's just that they seem to not want. It's just not enough. It's kind of where I'm going. It yeah. seems to not be enough nowadays. Well, I'll, I'll say it's not enough for us because, um, as you know, I am from uh, California. And so in California, um, I grew up around all different races. And so I was around um, uh, Hispanic immigrants, Asian immigrants. And what I noticed is they would come here and they would, oh, my gosh, they would work their butts off. They were kind of like us. And with, after um, post-slavery, they're like us. They worked hard. They lived meager. And so here's what they did. And unfortunately, we used to do, but somehow I guess we've gotten lazy and we've stopped doing this. So they may make little money, but here's what they do. They live below what below their means. And so what Bingo. happens is you, you work hard, you build and you build what's called a legacy. So that that Bingo. you live, you save, you buy property so you can pass down to that next generation. Now, that next generation. OK, so they're going to get a little bit of better start than you. Maybe you might pass down a home or give them an inheritance. And so that next generation builds on from that. And that's pretty much the American dream. You build a legacy somewhere. Why well, I can talk about that, but I want to get too deep in that. Unfortunately, the black community, we went askew. Mm. And I'm not agree with you anymore. What I happened, agree with you anymore. What happened with our women and what's not happening with others, we didn't stick with our men. We were we were manipulated. The black woman, they took the government instead of their husbands. They chose the government and government assistance instead of being loyal to their husbands and the black community. That's what agree. happened with us. And when you talk about work ethic, um, and, and this is another thing I say, because there seems to be a quote unquote gender war between black men and black women, um, black and they're going, oh, black women make more than black men. And this and that black men need to step up. Well, I mean, like 57 percent of black men live in the middle class or, you know, and that's not including what who lives in the upper class. I believe it's about 60 to 63 percent live in the middle or upper class. So why are we having this disconnect in terms of? Being able to, it, it, you got black men on average making forty two. You got black women on average making about thirty six. But together, that's about seventy eight, and that's what people are mistaken. That's why we're falling so far behind. And I tell people, at the end of the day, we all we all want the same result. Okay, we all want stronger families to build a stronger community, but we just have different ideas of how we're going to get there. Um, I personally believe kind of what you're saying in terms of black men have taken the criticism and we are doing better statistically speaking. Okay, but black women haven't had that criticism. And now that it's new, it's outrageous. But you see the manosphere going at such a rate because there's truth behind it. People think when when truth and, and women in general. Like when it comes to it, like the manosphere, they think we want to just come here and hate women. When the truth of the matter is the people here love women. We just don't like what women have become uh, in 2021. So I can absolutely agree with that. And I think I'm going to your point as a whole, not just black women, but I do believe um, we lead it. I do think without the black throughout, the, excuse me, throughout the black community, there's a low level sense of self-loathing. A little mm. bit. So, so one thing I noticed, um, especially when I was living in California, you would see black people, they would live in an apartment, but yet they would drive into their apartment in like a Mercedes or a Benz or things like this, or they would be, you know, wearing the flyest, you know, Jordans, or if you really want to go back into the 90s, you know, expensive jewelry and all these things. And I think it's because it's a low level sort of self hatred. Like we want to put these things out in the forefront to say, hey, look, I'm worthy. But no, we already are. We Bingo. already are. It's okay that we, we are a small percentage of of the population, but we really need as a whole to have a sense of self pride. And I think the reason why it's so prevalent in our race is because our race is a um, matriarchy. We let the woman be the head, you know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a woman's state of mind, you know what I mean? To be vain and all these things and we're letting the women lead. And so that's a problem. We want others to see us as being rich. And if you really wanna be honest, people that really have money, they're not really trying to show it like that. Bingo. It's typically and, people that don't have money that want to appear like they have money. And, and not Nyla, let yeah. me just say that when you look at designer clothing, all and this is for across the board, the cheapest designer clothing has the most logos on it. When Absolutely. you look at the most, ex, 
It, it, so you get the you see the bag with the LV LV all over the bag. Yep. That's the cheapest one on the on the on the shelf. Yep. Okay, and and we'll get that one because we want people to see that as LV, not knowing that the people who actually have the money don't buy that. They just buy the all black purse that doesn't have anything on it because it's more discreet. It's almost being a part of a a secret club. And 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 it's and it's it's sad because I want to say the men are almost incentivized to to practice this. Uh, this financial illiteracy, if I if I can say that, because even and, and this is a story I've shared it before, but when I was in college, um, I was I was very to myself. I would already have my girlfriend. I knew where I wanted to go in my life. I knew I wanted to get married. I, this is what I was going to do. So I wasn't too worried about that. What I wanted to do was be the best I could be in sports. So um, and I was always kind of financially sound okay so i didn't i never really bought things that i couldn't afford or that i could afford but i just felt like it was too expensive for what it is um so we would go to we we go to practice and people would make fun of me because i got the ripped up shoes um because i'm running my shoe i'm using my shoes until they're done i'm not i'm not going out and buying no new <laughs> shoes this isn't that. i'm using them until they're done and and at this time i just had a flip phone and and you know these what they did was try to make me feel obviously i knew better because but i could see how somebody else could be made to feel as if they're lesser than because they don't have those things but i had a car so we would have everybody on my team asking me for rides but they walking around in in 300 shoes and i just right but that was what the girls wanted they didn't care that the dudes didn't have a car they just wanted the 300 dollars pair of shoes like and that's why so i say it is a problem within the black community but because we have chosen to put the woman as the head that's it right there the men are doing what the women want that's bad idea. Bad idea. And I'm like you. My car is uh, from 2013. It's been paid off. And I'm going to ride Bingo. that thing to the wheels fall off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when you're like that, that's because you're secure within yourself. When you're doing all these things, you somehow feel that you're less than. And this is not about white supremacy or white standard of view, none of that. They're not going around saying we're white and we're supreme. We need to be okay with who we are. We need to put women back in their place. Because that all of this is a woman's idea, that vanity, that's a female mindset. And unfortunately, that female mindset is pervasive in the black community. And that's why we need to have these talks, because we need to stop this. Because at the end of the day, it's killing us, honestly. Can you, can you tell me kind of how what you feel about uh, about the 78 percent out of wedlock rate, probably oh, about yeah. 80 in 2021? Um, I, I want to know how you feel about it and and and. What do you think, how do I word this? What do you think, I guess, what do you think we could do to kind of prevent that? Like where, why, why do you think that 78% rate? Okay, let me ask, let me just, cause I do this a lot. Let's go like this. What are the effects of a man being raised by a single mother? Let's oh, do that. Can, dear. can we talk about that a little bit? <laughs> you're going to make sure I get hated, huh? <laughs> we're doing, okay, here's the thing. If we're dealing with the 78% out of wedlock rate, and we would have to assume that most of those children are being raised by women, and, and yes. statistically speaking, that would be a true assumption. Um, mm -hmm. what, well, how is that going to affect the men that then go out into the world and have to show you know that, that are right. that are representing themselves as black that are that are black people like so, how does single motherhood affect black children black boys in particular well, the thing about it is we're before we even get into the the black part of it the the the, the data is already out the facts right. are there it's been stated children that are raised i don't care what your race is if you're raised in a single parent household the 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 the, the probability of you um going to prison uh, the probability of you committing suicide, right? Um, Double the, two times yeah, the chance of committing absolutely. suicide. Um, we got you uh, you're two times yourself. more likely. You're two times more likely to drop out of school. Absolutely. You're and and for black for black girls, I mean, or you're 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 about three times more likely to commit a violent crime. Yep. You're you're thirty percent more likely to not have a job at the age of thirty, and for black girls you're almost three times more likely to get pregnant before the age of 18. So then the cycle repeats itself. Uh, going to prison, all of the above when you're raised by a single parent, but it affects us more. Our numbers are just higher. You know what I'm saying? When there is not a man there um, to create stability. And so that's why, you know, our, our, we're trying try not to go off topic here, but that's why we're talking about the nature of a woman. A woman is not able to create the stability 
in a child the way a man can. It's been said before that pretty much a woman is useful for their children up until around about the age of eight. After that, mm. it's absolutely good to have us there, of course. But after that, a man needs to take over, especially right. in the life of a male. If that father is not there, essentially what that man, what that boy child is going to do is he's going to take on the emotions of that female, that woman, because that's all he sees. He and, and all this stuff about, um, you know, oh, we can divorce and the kids can be here one weekend and they're the next. A, a man child, a boy child needs to see his father every day. He needs to see how his father moves. He needs to Thanks. see how his father walks, how he talks. He needs to see that on a daily basis. So in reality, our court systems are really terrible because it's set up for the woman. But in reality, it's the man if anything, that should really get charged to the children after the age of eight, because it's mm. the man that's going to create that that stability. I'm very nervous. because I'm about to say something that they're really not going to like right now. Say but, whatever you okay. like, um, and and we'll we'll deal with whatever comes with it, however okay. we want to. At this the end of the day, this is our platform, and this is why we have it. So nobody okay. can tell us to not say what we want. Okay, here we go. Hope, I hope I hope your audience holds on. <laughs> All right, hold on to your hats, people. You heard it. You got the warning. <laughs> Women essentially, oh boy, are like children. You've heard this, right? You know when a plane's going down or a, sh a ship is sinking. What do they say? Women, Soup. women and children first. Right. Essentially, women are like children. Oh, I'm about to say it, and similar to dogs. But I'm gonna, <laughs> but I'm gonna explain that. I'm gonna explain that. Um, children and your dogs, pets, need to be trained. If you do not train your children up right, and if you do not train, tra uh, excuse me, train your dog up right, what are they gonna do? They're gonna crap all over your house. And if you have a woman out here, uncovered, untrained, unsubmissive, that's exactly what she does. She no. craps all over the house. And, and Nyla, let me um, yes, put, I actually did a video and it, and I understood that it was a dangerous topic too, because if you say something like that, obviously I people know. are going to, people are just going to take it and say, oh, they compare women to not understanding. We're talking about yes, a little I'm, bit I'm, of behavior and what you have to do. It's not like we're saying women are dogs, obviously. No, no, I, I'm saying right. because in the same sense, a woman needs to be trained. In my personal belief, I believe a woman always has to have a male covering over her. A woman is and, supposed to. Oh, and no, I was just going to say, it, but that that's for some reason is so taboo. And it's not even the like, OK, the word train may rub people off the wrong way. But if, it, if you're sitting and you're offended right now, think of being coached. OK, okay think of a man coach, just having to teach better, you. Yeah. It th a man just has to kind of, t you have to be coachable as a woman. You have to allow a man, you know, you jump in all, you, 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 you expect him to lead. So he has to be able to lead you and coach you to, to be what Absolutely. he needs to get, to get y'all to the promised land. I don't understand why that's such a taboo thing to say right now. It's maybe because feminism then moved into the way and it's, it's making a lot of people feel like anything a man has to say is a part of the patriarchy. So now we're not even allowed to, to have conversations with women. You know what I mean? So it's, exactly. it's, so that's actually a better word. Well, I mean, I kind of like the word train myself, but, but yeah, I, I mean, it is what it is. Swallow. I think people can swallow the word uh, coached a little bit better. Essentially what happens is a woman is supposed to go from her father's home straight from her father's home and her father's covering into her husband's home into his covering so she could has consistent guidance unfortunately what has happened in the black community is the our women are uncovered a lot of times they were raised in a single family home they've been around women so there was no guidance there and then she's out in the world a lot of women don't want at that point they've never been raised uh, with the guidance of a male father figure. And so now she's out here in this world and she doesn't know how to submit to the authority of a man. So essentially we have a bunch of women out here that are wild. And and as we've said before, uh, when when the white community gets a cold, the black community gets, a, gets the flu. And so you have a bunch of wild, uncovered, untrained, unsubmissive black women running around here and we can see the fruits of that. We can look at the black community and see what happens when you put the women at the head. We have high, um, high uh, crime rates, violent crime rates. We have high um, incarceration uh, rates. We have high, uh, we don't talk about this, but our abortion rates are extremely high. We've been at 13% since I was a kid. Our numbers should be way higher, but we have millions.
millions of our black babies are in the, in genocide. This is our women that are killing their babies. We have all of these different things. This is what it looks like when you put the women at the head. We are the only community that does this. No other community on this earth puts their women at the top but us. I couldn't agree with you anymore. I right. couldn't and agree with you, you more. When you talk about these things the way I do, you 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 say that you hate women, you hate black people. Not at all. I'm a woman myself. I don't hate black women. I just believe that there is a place for a woman, and our place is amazing if we would take it. But somehow things have get, gotten flipped in our community where we put the women first. And so uh, let me let me just add this really quick. So what happens is back to your question: when you do put the when you do have the woman raising the kids as a single mom and you don't have a father, what happens is the black woman, she flips the roles. So what you see now, you see a lot of black women out here being very masculine. You know what I mean? Mm, you're no, white. Go woman, talk to him, Nyla. Talk to him. <laughs> yeah, so you have the women out here going for those degrees, going for these high jobs and, and, and going for this, trying to being like the men. And then what do you have with the, with the men? You have overly emotional men now. That's not a black man. When you see these uh, men out here hollering and yelling and screaming and, and like a woman, that's not the nature of a man. A lot of these young black men, they think that being a man is being violent and out of control. Absolutely not. The nature of a, of a man is control, control and domination over your emotions. Hey, oh, but my you goodness. All that. And because here's what your mom did. Every time something didn't go her way, she kicked and had a fit and she screamed and yelled and, and it was emotional. So that's what the black man, the black boy grew up seeing. So he doesn't know how to control his emotions. Thank you. Keep, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And, and this is what I tell. I always try to tell people black, any single mother, it doesn't even got to be black. Regardless, a single mother is going right. to coach a boy up to be what they wanted their man to be or what they feel like yeah. they what wanted they their man to be. So they teach. Thank you. And so they teach these young men to be overly emotional. They don't teach them any responsibility. And then they wonder why they end up in prison because when they got in trouble in school, you went and yelled at the principal instead of yelling at the boy. Absolutely. Instead of telling him, instead yep. of disciplining him and telling him where he was wrong, you went up to the school and you yelled at the principal and that told the boy I could do no wrong. So he kept doing mischievous things and getting away with it because his mama was there to protect him. All that's, the time. Your so he, that's your baby. And see, that's a woman for you. And, and, and the thing about it is, there is a place for that. But when that woman does not have a man, because what, what a man will do, he'll step in and he'll check that. And he'll come and he'll say, hey, what was my child doing? What was he doing? He's going to check that But a woman because we're mama bears, which there is a place for that. We want to protect our babies. We want to protect our babies, but we need a man over us because we want to protect our babies. But your baby's been cutting up. Right. You know, bullying and, kids and stuff like that. You're not supposed to protect your baby then. You need a discipline. And so that's where a man thank is you. necessary. Right. And that's why and that's why I always tell people too, when when a, a father isn't appreciated until you're an adult. A lot of the times uh, because mom is there to bandage you up when you slip and fall. She's there because of the empathy. And this is a good thing. It's natural. It's, yes, it's a good thing. But you need yes. you need the masculine energy to balance that out because um, uh, and, and a lot of times the men aren't respected until you get to a certain age and you realize, OK, when I did this wrong and my dad spanked me or whooped me or told me to go, uh, you know, do my homework instead of going outside and being in the streets and this, this and that. You don't it, at the moment in the meet in the in the immediate moment, you feel like, oh, why is he doing this to me? Why is this happening to me? Why? You know, but once you get older and you see everybody else lives falling apart and you realize, oh, my life is still intact because I followed the rules that my dad set in place when I was a child. Right. And, right. and a lot of times that goes unappreciated until they're older. But it needs to be appreciated as I mean, it, it's a it's a necessary role that that man, I, I'm happy you talking about this. And. And I do want to talk a little bit about how women are giving away a lot of their power. It, like yeah, they, they, yeah. they feel like this, what they're doing now, this, this road that they're taking is going to quote unquote empower women. But women have been power. You can, you can literally reap the benefits of war without having to lift a finger <laughs> as a woman. And how much more power do you need? That's the most powerful position. And in a video, I compared this kind of behavior to what is a wolf and, and a dog. Okay. I said the wolves, they didn't want to 
they were a little bit more reluctant. They were a little bit more antisocial. They wanted to compete with human beings. They wanted to compete with men for territory. While dogs said, hey, we can't beat them. They're more so, uh, dogs were more social. So they came around and they said, hey, I can use humans to survive for longer. So when you look at who is prospering more, you're seeing that the although the wolves may seem a little bit more independent, a little bit more rough, and you may uh, salute to that. You see that the dogs are actually prospering more because they've allowed for somebody to take the lead and make sacrifices on their behalf. You know what I mean? You, you get where I'm going with that in terms oh, of how that can be comparable to women's situation currently? I, 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 in comparison to women, yes, I do see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so, I mean, why would you give away your natural ability, like the ability to just be vulnerable? That natural, why you would you even want to give that away? You know what I think it is? I think what it is, a woman's mind is very confused. A woman's mind is very confused. And so when we say, you know, the man is the head, I mean, we understand this. You know, I mean, any company, there has to be one CEO, right? There has to be a CEO. And then you have different levels and different people. The problem with a woman, we think that because we are not the CEO, we're not the supervisor. Yeah. We think that our role is less important and it's not. Our role is just as important, but no, we're not the CEO and that's okay. But what else do you expect from a female's mind? We don't understand logical things a lot of times because we base everything off of emotions. And so emotionally we feel, well, I want to be in front. I want to be the head and da, 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 da. And, and I get that, but our role is, is very important if we stay in it. Right. Right. But when yeah. we try to venture out and, and try to be like the man, that's when things tend to fall apart. So right. like for the women, your role as a woman, um, not side by side with your men, not side by side with your husband, but he is the head over you. But your role is very essential. But when we aren't in our role again, you see what happens. Right. Yeah, Man. and so the feminist, the feminist, that's, and, and so let me make it clear. We're talking about black women because we're black, but understand the fem, the feminist movement, that was created by white women. That was not Let's for go. us. Let's that go. Let's go. Get into it. <laughs> so, so don't think I'm saying, oh, we need to worship the white, not by any means. The white woman, she, and, and, and again, I'm not racist. I'm not saying this. I'm just speaking real. The white woman, she's the one that engineered all of this. But unfortunately, us black women, we just fell right into it. And it's destroyed us because, again, what, remember what we talked about when we first started? Again, the black woman envies the white woman. So wow. that's why we took on their struggle. And look at us now because of that. The white woman, and I'm not, oh man, this is going to sound racist. I'm not racist. I'm really not. No, keep, just please keep, just keep okay, it coming. No, keep I'm, it because we. Fine. Okay. <laughs> Cause we talk a lot. Of, we talk about a lot of these things, but coming from a woman, especially a feminine woman, this is so important. I want you to keep what you have in your head right now, but this is very important because a lot of the voices that are on YouTube or on platforms that other women get to hear are very masculine women because traditionally speaking, yeah. the feminine women don't want to be outspoken. They don't want platforms. They don't and, and want so, to so that, come out against yes. men. And Go so ahead. that and that was the thing. I remember the last time I was on your show, you're like, "Don't you want your own platform?" It's like, not really. I'm kind of, you know, I, I'm I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I work, and so that, you know, that's another thing. But I do understand that this needs to be said, and so I understand that. But 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 actually, no, I'm kind of good in my little my little world here. But I do understand this. The truth needs to be spoken. And so basically, so so I want people that are thinking, "Oh, she's hating black women and she hates herself and all these things." Absolutely not. The feminist movement was a white woman's movement. The white you can look woman. that up. What's that? I said you can Google that. That's the thing they'll get right. upset that about. Facts. That's a fact. Like said, all women are the same. I'm not saying that we're, we're the same. It's just it manifests. Excuse me, manifests itself differently. The white woman was not happy with her role, very unsatisfied, and so she created this feminist movement unfortunately the black community were easily manipulated and so mm. we jumped on a movement and a battle that was not ours 
And so we do it all the time. We do I mean, it when you all look at, the time. When you look at what, what happened to us after the, after the civil rights movement, I believe the civil rights movement got too powerful and it was scary. So we had yeah. to get separated and we did successfully. But one right. of the things that's going on right now is we have black women fighting for everybody except for black people. They're going on, they're talking mm. about, and I don't have anything against these communities. They're going on, they're talking oh. about LGBTQ. They're going Man. on, they're talking about Asian oh. hate. They're going Can on, they're talking about here? women's issues. Really quick? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to say this. Oh, oh man, I don't, I don't want to get your channel flagged. <laughs> I'm scared to get your channel flagged. But if you want to really get to the truth, and I'm about to hurt some feelings right now, the Black Lives Matter movement, led by who? Oh, you know, we, you know, where we, you know, we've spoken about our, um, our opinions on some of these topics. Okay, so. the Black Lives Matter movement. Our women, because we want to put them at the head. They said the Black Lives Matter movement was about the black man and protecting the black black man. This is where I get almost angry. That was bull crap. The Black Lives Matter movement was started, led, and continued by, okay, I mean, oh boy, uh, it's just a fact, lesbian <laughs> black women. Their, their agenda was not to uplift the black family unit. That was not their intentions at all. But because the black female is so adamant and so boy, uh, uh, is it boisterous is about, about her beliefs that she pushed this agenda had nothing to do with um, building up the, the family unit. And if you went to their website and I did before they changed it, before they were, um, before they were um, un uncovered, um, not only were they not about the black family unit with the man being the head, they believed in communal family where the community raised the kids and all these different <laughs> things. They, uh, they were about the destruction of the black family unit and the destruction of the black man, the black heterosexual male. But because the black community is so easily manipulated, we fell for it because that group had a good title. Black Lives <laughs> Matter sounds about right. So let's get behind this. Now, and, who, and this oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm going to continue. Say, who, who is it that the Black Lives Matter group Lift it up. You had people. Oh, this is gonna be. Oh, I'm scared to say hey, this. <laughs> keep, keep warming up, because I'm I'm following you, and okay. I can jump in at any moment. Because I I we 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 on the same page, and I'm happy we okay. got this chemistry because I could go off too. But I'm gonna let. I I need you to keep doing it because I, I love hearing this coming from a woman. Because I thought that this was just me thinking these things. But go ahead. So essentially, what would happen is there would be a case that came out, you know, some 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 black man that was in trouble with the law and, you know, things happen. And the reality of it is every other race knows this. When you choose a life of crime, when you do certain things and where, where the law is in your life, anything can happen. You don't know because when you choose hmm. that lifestyle, it's not stable. So what happens is you'd have a, a young man get in trouble with the law. Things happen. They were killed by the police. So what we do, what the Black Lives Matter did, was they exalted those men. No other race does that but us. They had, okay, we're, we're, I'm going to touch this and then we can leave it really quick because I know a lot of people are not going to like this one. But we had George Floyd up there with Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. We had put him up with them. OK, black women did this. Black Lives Matter did this. Let's not talk about the 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 many do black doctors, the black male doctors. We don't want to put them up. We don't no. want to put the black male. Uh, and I'm in. I'm well, I don't want to say where I am, but where I am, <laughs> there's plenty of black doctors, black dentists. I know I know personally many black in. Uh, black engineers, black male engineers, black male en uh, um, business owners. We don't want to put them up and exalt them. See, so the black woman, because of her envy, because of her penis envy, she wants to put the black male criminal up and put him up. See, that's how backwards the mind of a woman is. And so, the, unfortunately, because we're a matriarchy, we went right along with it. And we applauded that. How dare you mar the image of, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and put him on par with a man like George Floyd. What happened to him was terrible. You know, it's horrible. It is what it is. But when yeah. you're in a criminal life, criminal things happen to you. And and here's the no thing. I'm in many... I'm in Minneapolis now, you know, I'm from Minnesota, so I'm in Minneapolis okay. now. Okay. And, but this, here's the thing, here's the thing that we don't want to talk about. 
Here's the thing, and I'm, this doesn't mean I'm on either side. I'm really more <laughs> middle. I'm for whoever gives black folks the, the, the whatever they're going to give us. That's where my vote is going, okay? So if somebody gives us something or says they have this to offer to the black community, that's where my vote goes. I don't go for the whole, the okie doke. I'm not choosing Democrat just because it's cool to choose Democrat and everybody in our community say that. And they say, if you don't choose Democrat, you're uh, you're uh, Uncle Tom or this, this. Well, you already know I've lost, I've, already you told you I've lost everybody in my family because of my belief. So, yeah, and, and this and and this is the thing. Like people look at a, a twenty dollar super chat and they go, "Oh, you're do, you're doing a big. You're just saying this stuff just so you can make." I'm like, "Do you <laughs> understand the repercussions that saying these ideas have oh, for yes. black people? Like, oh, yes. if, if if I even say something like, how in the world?" With with considering everything that the Democrats have done against black folks and how a lot of their policies have oh, worked well. not in our favor, we still have. What is it? Ninety five percent of black women voting Democrat. What, what's the ninety five percent of disc ill? The un disc un unfortunate <laughs> part is a lot of black people don't know history. The the party of slavery, the party of Jim Crow, all those Democrat. things. That was the Democrat Party. Thank you. They are here to deceive us and to keep us deceived and to keep us on that plantation. And if you dare attempt to leave that plantation, the ones that are still left are in control in their mind. You're well, I've been called. I'm a woman, but I've been called Uncle Tom, Bedwinch, every word in the book. But here's the thing about it is, oh, you must hate yourself. No, I love myself and I love the way Bingo. God created me. And I know that black people, when we're when we're left to our own vices, we can be a powerful and beautiful people. But unfortunately, we are easily deceived. Right. We we want the hand. Okay. Okay. Let me. That's I what they do okay. every single election, Nyla. That's what they do. Every yeah. election, every single. And I, let me just say this quick. Historically speaking, if you, I don't know if people have noticed this, but black men, especially black men, are very working class people. Absolutely. Okay. Historically speaking, we have worked very hard to pull ourselves up. We've gotten knocked down. We've pulled ourselves That's back. Enough. Up, got knocked down. And we've pulled ourselves. And this is what we've continued to do. Now we're supposed to understand this rhetoric. Now we're supposed to believe in this rhetoric that. Um, the only of white supremacy, and we can't do anything because of white no. supremacy. And now we're supposed to be join the Democratic Party so that they can help us go against white people and get reparations. And we're expecting they want us to join a party that expects people who have oppressed us to help us. I just, I, yes. me personally, I've never gotten that. Like that hasn't they, made sense. They to me. want to keep us in a position of submission. They want to keep us um, feeling. As like we're oppressed, that we're victims. And let me say this. Okay, oh boy. Even if you are a victim, let, let, let's, let's put this in, in natural time. Let's say you were a victim. Let's say you're walking down the street, someone beats you over the head, takes your money, and you are a true victim. Here's the thing. Don't be a victim. Being a victim is not going to get you anywhere. Even if it did happen to you, you have to rise above that. And unfortunately, a lot of these Democrats, Democrats, they want to keep us in a state of victimhood and oppression. I have had conversations with black people and I say, I'm not oppressed. I'm not a victim. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I'm like, what how are you going to tell me? <laughs> how are you going to tell me that I'm oppressed? How am I oppressed? Let me say this. I know we're kind of going off from women. We'll get back there. We're going to get back. Yeah, but um, we'll, we'll listen, the reality of it is there are people all over the world that would almost die to get here. And I know this for a fact because I lived in a state where people were literally given their lives to get to this country because this country is very unique. This Thank is the you. one place in the world that if you work hard, you do the right things, you save your money, you live beneath your means, you have a family, you can make it in this life. And so people yeah. will... will you have people, uh, the, his, the the Mexicans where I live in California, they would travel through the desert, through the mountains, doing anything to get here because other countries, there's not this opportunity. And here we are as black people. We help to build this nation. But we are letting somebody tell us that we are not Americans. We are Americans and we are here for this opportunity. Take it. Thank you. But we want Thank people, you. but we want to stay in this perpetual victimhood, um, oppressed state. And again, to bring it back to women, that is a female mindset. That is not a male mindset. A male mindset is not about victimhood. It's not a woman's is. Again, we go back to that phrase, 
women and children first, because that's what's in us. Women need to be protected and helped. And so that's why the black community is requiring, demanding help from the government. No, do it on your own, work hard, make it happen. We need to get rid of this female feminist mentality in the black community, because that is not who we are. Thank you, man. I'm so happy now that you on here saying these things because, and, and, and one of the things I tell black men in particular um, is you got to leave the country. If you mm. think that you have it bad here, where are you going to have yeah. it better? And, and I've been, to, I was, I spent a month in Kenya. Mar I spent the whole month of March in Kenya. I'll tell you now, it's not better. And if you're a woman, if you're a black woman in particular, you need a man there. It's oh not, yes. If you oh, are you going to go to China, the place where they were kicking black people out of hotels because they said that it was the Africans that brought the corona. I don't even know if you can say that word, but you know where I'm going. Yes. Brought that into the world. They said that the Africans did it, so they were kicking black people out of hotels. They're killing the Uyghur people right now. Wow. There's a massacre mm -hmm. going on in China. They're literally doing a Holocaust right now. No one's talking about it because China has a lot of financial power. Yeah. I, I, I know yeah. we're getting into politics a little bit. I'm we sorry. Are, I'm we're going to get back to We got Hunter Biden. We got we got a ninety. Five percent of our women are voting for uh, for a president whose son is in bed with China. He's mm. worked for a company. He's literally he got caught saying the n word in in an email or in 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 uh, yeah not, just recent, very recently very recently in emails on um uh God what is that guy's name um the God something the God um Charlemagne is it Charlemagne, Charlemagne God and, he, and and Biden went on there he legitimately said to our face. You are not black if you don't vote for me. And we still voted for him. My Dummies. God. My God. Dummies. And we still and, voted for that man. And I'm not even, and here's the thing. I'm not saying that you have to vote Democrat no, or Republican or in, I don't care that's what you do, but look right. at the information that's given. Don't just go, oh my gosh, we have the chance to get a black woman into the office. So 95% of black women not go out and vote for them. Woman. That was not even a black American woman. That's the crazy part about it. And that's she's, all she's Native about. American and she she identified as Native American up until, the, until she wanted to well, get like into the White House. Indian. She's an Indian. Yo, Indian. I'm sorry. Was it Indian yeah. or Native she's American? An Indi no, not. It's, it's India Indian. Yeah. It, okay. So Indian. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's so Indian. I guess and they she wanted her in there because that's where they get their hair. So <laughs> they were like, we want, the woman, we want a woman from the place where we get our hair. So, <laughs> but anyway, we can, we can move in there. I know we're, we're, if we start going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take it here then. I'll, I'll take it here for you. Uh, I, let's go here. What do you think? What, how do you think a, a black man, um, say he's like 27, 26, you know, he's just kind of getting his legs under his feet. He's trying to get things going. How do you feel he should go about dating black women in 2021? Do you have any advice for a man trying to date black women in 2021? Man, oh wow. You know, this, this is a very, a very important question because, you know, I have two sons of my own. And so I'm really concerned about uh, what kind of wives um, that they will, be able to get, you know, in, um, in this, when, when they become men. Um, and, and I think I said this on, on your last show. Um, the main thing for a man, um, especially a young man is to focus on their goal. Even at Thank that you. age, um, I, I honestly, you know, these are my sons and they're, um, 11 and eight, and I'm going to impress on them to not worry about that. You focus on what you're trying to achieve in this life. And what you need to look for is a woman that's gonna jump onto that. Unfortunately, because men are very visual and sometimes because of this, the deception of women and the things that we do, sometimes you can kind of be thrown off. You know what I mean? Um, mm, hair, nails, hair, and, and, hair, and manipulation yes. used to get the, yeah. the boobs out, you know, waist trainers, all these things. And it's very easy to get um, uh, manipulated and, and, and almost, um, it's almost like voodoo sometimes, you know what I mean? Because the way that women, a woman can be, but, and that's all fine for fun and games. Um, but when you're thinking about a woman on your team, all I can say is they will come to you. When you focus on what you're trying to do, they will come to you. Um, uh, this actually brings, this is kind of a side topic, but I did, I definitely wanted to touch on this um, before, uh, you know, before we end this. Um, and, and I really hope that men really hear this. 
the one of the worst things that you can do as a man is to become a stepfather. And, and Please, hey, Nyla, okay. hey, Nyla, oh, you got to yeah. talk about this. Please right. talk to this, because anytime it comes from a man, anytime yeah. it comes from a man, they say it's just you hate women. You don't want to see the community get better. Who's going to take care of these kids if they don't have it? That was your responsibility as a mother. But I'm going to let you go ahead and do the talking because yeah, so we've I, already talked about it enough. Right. So I'm, I want to bring that up because that kind of bleeds into what we're talking about, about these young men, you know, you know, you know, about the type of women they're going to get. Unfortunately, what a lot of men do, because there's so many single mothers out there, they they get with the single mothers because they're very easy. It's easy to get with a single mother because she's desperate and she's she's desperate. She's easy. You can jump right in. You don't have to put in a whole lot of work with a single mother. But I'm going to say this. One of the worst things you can do is to get with one. And so what the women told you, men, they said that when you get with us that you're helping the community and you're doing a good thing. You're helping that poor child that doesn't have a father. You're going to step in and you're going to be the father and you are just helping the community. Gentlemen, you are not helping the community when you sign up to be the father of these women's children. You are not. Here's why. Because what you did when you signed up to be a stepfather, what you did is you made it easy for women to leave their men. Because a woman knows I can leave my man. I cannot. I, I, I don't have to step with him because I know some beta simp is going to step in and, and pick up the pieces. That's what you're doing. Now, I'm saying this because my father was one. OK, not just my father, but I know many men that chose this route. And that's the Here, worst thing you can do. And here's why. Now, let okay. me say one thing before okay, you say okay. why it's the worst thing you can do. I do want you to keep that in your mind. Right. We are not say, in certain situations. I get it. OK, it's not all. But take the information and do what it with you what you will. All right. Um, I also was raised. My, my mom was a single mother and then she got yeah. married to another man who had children himself. So it made a little more sense because both people were bringing right, something right, to yeah. the. So it, it, we're not saying it's just black and white, this, this and that. If, it, if it's up to me. In terms of being strategic in your own life as a man and following your own purpose, this is not something you want to do. Tell them exactly why they should not do this, Nyla. Go ahead. Well, first, Tell let them. me say this. I know somebody Well, no, my mama, you know, my stepdaddy was important to me. I, I get all that. So I'm going to say I'm going to repeat the words of you ever heard of uh, Jesse Lee Peterson? Yes, sir. Uh, he, yes, he, says, he says <laughs> yes. this phrase and I love it. Not all, not all, not all, but most. So if this if it doesn't apply, let it fly. But so now that that's being said, if your stepdaddy was the greatest man in the world, then I'm not talking to you. That's fine. There's always exceptions to every rule. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, as human beings, we're animals and we have certain instincts. Right. Yeah, right. Here's what happens when you take on a woman that has another man's child. That woman will never fully respect you. She doesn't understand why she doesn't, but she doesn't. Because here's the thing, and I'm going to break it down for you. Now, now, the woman's mind, she's not breaking this down. All she knows is she can't respect this man. Here's what happens. Basically, what you're saying is this, that your seed, because a man carries a seed, right? Your seed is not good enough to produce your own legacy. So you're going to take on the legacy of another man and submit to this woman and build up another man's legacy. Now, the woman's mind doesn't fully grasp this, but all she knows is, I can't respect this man. For whatever reason, I just can't respect him. If you're a man and you respect your male authority, you want your seed to produce your own legacy. Okay? And so that's, now, now, do we cognitively think all this stuff through? No. But like I said, we're animals like anybody else and we have instincts. And so instinctually, a woman knows, man, this man done took all my kids. Something about me just can't respect this man. And I've heard story after story after story of single, of, of excuse me, of stepfathers that took on a woman that had another man's children. And I've heard of men that I've gotten, that I've gotten abused. Not just mentally, but physically abused by their woman. Financially as well, all by, the okay, time. Here we go. Financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually abused by women because you made a choice to take on another man's legacy. I need our black men to be built up. Your seed means something. 
You, your seed means something and you need your woman to respect that. A woman cannot respect you when you take on another man's seed. And we've all heard the story of lions. If a lion, if a male lion takes over the, uh, the pride, he's going to kill those cubs. Gone. They're that's gone. Because that's. So, yes. The, the male lion doesn't understand that. It's instinctual, right? So even in us, there's certain things that are instinctual. We don't understand it. But it's instinct. So a woman knows, wow, this, this man done came in and took me and my kid and this other dude. Wow, I just can't respect this man. She doesn't understand it herself. But all she knows is I can't respect this man. And she's not going to give it to you. I would love to tell the story of my family, but it's, that's a rough one. I'll, I'll kind of, I'll, maybe I'll save that, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, if you want to tell it, we got time. It's I think gonna it, make, I mean, going to th- make this podcast. I'll, you know, I do kind of want to tell it because I think people need to hear this. Yeah, there's a lot of people listening right now. Now we got 600 people in the live. Make sure y'all hit that like, hit the subscribe button. Nyla does. I am actively helping Nyla get her own channel. She has her channel now, but we're going to, we're going to, I'm helping her put some things together behind the scenes so that she can really get this stuff out there. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are interested in hearing what you got to say, Nyla. So okay. if you want to tell that story, we got time. I, I'm going to I'm gonna try to condense it as much as possible. Um, my father, God rest his soul, he's passed on now. He died of a uh, stage four lung cancer. But um, I, I love my father. But, but I would be a liar if I said that, that my, my father was, wasn't a beta. Okay. Now, that being said, my father was a police officer. And he uh, retired from the, the United States Army. So we have two flags. You know, they give you the flag. We have two flags. My father was an honorable man. You would think that he was an alpha, right? What my father did, God rest his soul, he took my mother with two children. Because this was back in the 70s. So all this information, the manosphere, this wasn't out back then. So back then, when you took on a single mother, that was an honorable thing. So my father, again, God rest his soul, he believed that taking my mother with two children was a good thing. But here's how my father's story ended. He took her on. My mother had one other child, and that was me. And I'm a female. So my father's legacy will not be carried on. My mother wouldn't have another wow. child for him. He, she wouldn't wow. have another child because I was the third child. So she wouldn't have another. So my father's legacy dies, unfortunately, with me because I take on my husband's legacy. Okay? My father stepped in. He worked hard and made a good life. He became a police officer. And now to this day, after his death, my mother, she 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 didn't have, no, have to work another day in her life because that's how well my my father provided for her. My my mother did not give any inheritance to um, the children. He wanted to give inheritance to me and his other daughters. She gave us nothing because that's the that's the nature of a woman. I'm scared to death that my mother might hear this, but it's the truth. Let me let me and let me say this. Here's how much my mother respected this man that took her and her two children in. When my father died, he requested that um, if he got to the point where he couldn't survive on equipment, she want, he wanted the, uh, the, pu- the plug pulled to end his suffering. My mother didn't do it. She allowed my father to suffer for hours. And watch this, because she, she, she didn't want to pull the plug. So my father suffered. If she if she'd have pulled the plug, it would have lasted a few minutes and he would have been gone. She wouldn't pull the plug. My mother did not die by my father's side. She went home and went to bed. So my father died by himself. So what I'm now I'm not saying that's every stepfather's legacy. But what I'm saying is it's more common than what we what we think. My mother my father died believing that his wife was his everything and this is what she did to him i'm i'm not alone in this i know people say well well, nyla you're bitter i'm not alone understand gentlemen and hear me clearly when you take on a single mother and become a stepfather that woman cannot respect you now i can give some other stories about some other people i know that's just my story but that is the reality she can't do it it's it's instinctual can you, I mean, do you have time to give a that de- just storytelling abilities? I mean, I'm sure everybody <laughs> wants to, I mean, you could use not names or you can. No, I won't I use a name. I do have a friend of mine that he, he told me, cause I told him I was going on the show. He said, please, you don't know, use my story to warn, you know, other men. So I'll give this next story. Okay. 
um, a good one, friend of uh, mine. One second, Nyla, oh, before yes, you start yes. the next story, we have okay. 623 people in here. Okay. Everybody hit that like button, first of all. Second of all, Nyla, it's Red Fem Diaries, right? Red yes, F. Sir. Uh, well, the right, Fem is spelled... Can you spell it out for me one more time? Uh, yes. I'm going to type it into the chat right now and pin it up to the top. Okay, so Fem is spelled F-E-M-M-E. And if, if I can break down why I gave myself that name. Oh, that's, that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's fine. The color red, because red represents the red pill movement. I don't know if a lot of people know about that. Yeah, that's it right there. Um, so red it represents the red pill movement. You know what I mean? And we've all seen, uh, we know where that comes from. That comes from the matrix. The red pill is about waking up to the truth. So I like red. I also read, I'm not saying I'm an adamant Republican, no, but I do have conservative views. But typically when you talk about a red state or a blue state, we know what we're talking about when we say red, right? Yes. Right. Also now, it's red, always, yeah, we know. And also red, <laughs> I am a I am a Christian doesn't mean I'm holier than thou, but red represents the blood of Christ. So I chose that 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 word red because it represents what I believe. Red pill, red states, red beliefs, red blood of Christ, red red as a blood of Christ. I chose fem because fem represents femininity, true femininity, not um what do you call this the um the feminist movement? No, but I mean true femininity, femininity, and I want to really talk about that at the, when we're done. True femininity. Femininity, excuse me. Um, I had a stuttering problem when I was younger. That's why I get tripped up over words. And diaries, because these are the beliefs that I truly believe. And unfortunately, like I, I, I've mentioned several times, I've lost literally everybody in my life besides my husband and my children and my mother um, because of my belief because she's coming around too. And so that's why I called it Red Femme Diaries. Um, yeah, that's right. Can you, that. okay, that, okay, that's, I, I pinned the uh, the channel to the top here. So if anybody after the show or whatever it may be, make sure y'all go ahead and give her a sub, man. I think she de she deserves a sub, uh, and, and at the very least. Um, also, let's um let's can we get into that next story of why men, why you believe men shouldn't uh, date single mothers and commit their lives to single mothers? Uh, uh, I I can I agree with you by the way. Um, so I do want you to go ahead and tell that next story. Okay, so the next what, what we see, we need to give him a name, right? Um, let's call him Bob. That's fine. <laughs> that's kind of silly, but no, nah, that's kind of silly. Let's not give him Bob. Give him a name. You give him. You give him a name. I don't know. Bob is kind of silly. Oh, uh, you can yes. give him. Um, call uh, him. Call him Chris. Chris. Okay, so Chris. We call him Chris, and like I said, Chris wanted me to share this story with you all because of what he's going through. What happened with him was Chris, um, uh, he ended up, he had a, he had a high school sweetheart and, you know, they were together. She, you know, went off and she had a baby, a daughter by another man. But Chris decided for whatever reason um, later on that he would take her on as a wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that daughter. And so after they had that daughter, they ended up having four more children, um, two daughters and then a set of twins, a boy and a girl. Uh, Chris's wife, like I said before, does not respect him. Um, I've heard it myself. She verbally abuses him in front of the children. She she has cursed him out, called him. I'm very careful with my language. She's called him a B.I.T.C.H. Everything, every, everything in the book. She's put hands on him. Here's the problem. Because of that beta male mentality, after she's put his hands on him, a lot of what you men do, he had the opportunity to call the police and put her in jail. But because you guys unfortunately sent to us, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't press charges. So a lot of you men out there, I know somebody's hearing me right now. When your woman puts hands on you, y'all don't hardly ever want to press charges because you don't want your woman in jail. That that's a bad thing because what you just did. You taught your woman that she can put her hands on you and you're not going to do a doggone thing about it. Right. And so because of that, his woman is completely out of control. Um, this man is being is, now this man I'm talking about. This is an engineer. Remember, I told you that we have black everything. He, he's one of the few black engineers in this country. He provides fully for his family, her daughter from another man, plus his children. He does all of these things. 
this this woman does not uh, clean the house. She doesn't cook, doesn't clean, doesn't do anything. She puts her hands on him. And this is what I'm saying. My story is not alone. I know many men that are going through this. You're living with a woman. She doesn't want to clean up. She doesn't she doesn't want to do her role. She doesn't want to submit. And you're living like this. I, I know they're out there. I know yeah. you guys are out there. You're and, dealing and this, with this. And Nyla, women don't like to understand. And, and, and I mean, they don't they don't they don't like to understand the fact that they are living. They are truly alive because at the mercy of men. And Absolutely. I know that's, that's taboo to say. I know you you know we don't you know, we well, don't sure. like to talk about that. But if we're completely honest and and men we have a social contract amongst each other. I understand that if I go into a bar and I get loud with a man, it can get physical. So without I mean with the exception of a few knuckleheads or a few people that have friends around them so they get extra brave, we tend to not do that because we have that so we have that respect, right? But a lot of times you see women you go into the bar, you see a woman splashing a drink in a man's face, hitting on him this and this and that, and the man doesn't even know how to respond because yes and so we, and that's another thing i really want to put out there oh man uh, my heart really goes out to you men because you men think it's honorable when you let a man like you said throw the drink in your face hit you punch you scratch you do all these things and you just don't do anything what needs to happen what i pray happens you need to start holding these women accountable when a woman puts her hands on you you call the authorities and when you call the authorities you let her sit in that cell because women are not being held accountable. That's the problem. So that's why you have so many women that are out here out of control because y'all just aren't doing, well, oh, I don't want my woman to be up in jail. I don't want her to do this. I don't want her to do that. Stop. Hold her accountable. You men do not deserve abuse. The fact of the matter is a woman knows when she puts her hands on you, Nine times out of 9.999 times out of 10, y'all men can put some serious damage on a woman. But a woman's mind, we Oof. know that you're not going to do nothing. So that's we why we strike out. Thank yeah. you. And, and that's why I have a specific distaste for women who think that they can fight men. And I'm like, oh, do you understand man. you are alive at the mercy? At the a mercy oh. that a man, when you act up like that, that a man doesn't just lash out because we have a social contract as men. We understand that if we do do that, we, we are the ones it. that are we responsible because we yeah. are always held accountable. Yeah. Now, regardless, but people like to say, "Oh, black men haven't been held accountable." This is not true. Sure. We have right. all, men have always been held accountable accountable for the things we do. A lot of times, women get that leeway and they start thinking it's sweet. And man, it's, it's sad to see that. And yeah. it's only because they understand that there's protection in place for them. They understand that they can do it because there's not much a man can do back to them. That's the only reason they act that way. If men at large were just if if every man that got hit by a woman hit them back, that wouldn't be a thing. I guarantee you. We, we have sunk into such a low depth. That I have seen, like, on social media, not my own personal life, but I have seen women threaten men. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Come on. Hit me. All the, the, and, and here, and we're going to go back to where we first are. We're going to go full circle. Remember we talked about the lies and deceit in a woman's mind? In a woman's mind, she really believes that I can fight this man. She thinks that. Because the reality of it is, you can't fight him. You're going to call the police. You know what I mean? You're going to cry. You're going to do all these things. But in a woman's warped, confused, childlike mind, she thinks that she can fight this six foot tall, muscle bound man. That's why a woman needs to be kept in and, and strict submission to male authority. Because if we're not, this is what we see. We see five foot, three inch, 110 pound soaking wet woman trying to go up against a six foot tall muscle bound man and thinking she can really beat him because that is how sick and warped and confused a woman's mind is. We need to stop this. This is this um this this is probably this is probably the best live I've ever done. I am you you really you really blessed it. because this message from a woman is so good to hear. It's, it's refreshing, truly, because you understand a lot of these things that women just seem to not get, and and maybe it's because they're they not going to get it. They're not. It, this is what I'm trying to really just put out there. A woman is not going to. That's, I know y'all want us to get it. You here's the thing. God bless you, man. Y'all so want women to be logical, don't you? You 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 guys want to be nice. You guys want to present nice. the 
the facts, the evidence, the data, and you want to show women the facts and you want us to understand, it's not going to happen. What you need to do is you take you need to take control over a woman the same way that you do a child. And someone's going to say, because of the things I said about my mother, well, she's just doing that because she's bitter. But remember what I told you before, what do I do for a living? I work with women and women only. Mm. And so the only way I'm able to um, keep control in my job, my female patients, all I deal with is 100% female patients. And I'm able to, the only way I'm able to get my job done peacefully is I take control from the minute I see them. I take control over them. I shut them down. I don't let them talk. I take control. That way I can, I can do my job. This is how I know so much about what I know because I've dealt with, dealt with women for so long. Mm. They have to be controlled like children. I don't want to say like dogs because people don't want to you know, hear that. So I'll just say children. They have to be kept under control. And, and let me tell you this, and I promise you, they're happier for it. Women I, and, are and I'm happy you just said that because so many times, like women will say they want this guy that allows them to do this and this and that. They don't know and any better. What they do, they keep pushing the envelope until they step on you. Once they find out they can step on you, it's over for you. You're it's dead. Over. Women it's do over. not want what they say yeah. they want a lot of the times in a man. They don't want these guys until you're about until you're about like 30. 35 and you slow down a little bit, you understand what's actually important in a man. That's kind of when you start going, I want a guy that can provide for me. protect, And you start to understand that a little bit more. But early on, I, th these women be saying they want this kind of guy and then they go and have sex and get pregnant by the very opposite of what they say they want. And, and it's because they're happy. Women seem, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm not a woman, so you've said it yourself, but it seems, it appears to be that women are truly happier when a man is the dominant one in the relationship, when a man gets to make the, the final decisions in the relationship. That doesn't Absolutely. mean, that doesn't mean you got to be a, a dictator. That don't, that don't mean you don't no, listen to no, what no, the woman no, no, has no, to no. say, because my, my wife in particular, uh, let's just give an example here. I had a couple, uh, everybody drink. I had a couple. <laughs> and I didn't have too many. I never get to the point where I'm falling. I, I never get bad, but I heard a conversation and I felt like I wanted to jump on the live. My wife told me, don't do that. Okay. Because this is not a good decision. Me hearing her and hearing her, although I get the final say of what goes on in our relationship or what, what happens, I respect her for her, you know, her opinions and what she got to say. So a lot of times when we say um, a man is the final, he's the head and he's going to lead the conversation. Women are hear that and they say, that means I got to be a maid. I got to be a slave, this and this and that. No. no, that's not what it means at all. Your opinion is valued. But since men think more on logic, he's going to be more likely to get you the results that you want. Absolutely. in your life. And I will compare this to a, a major company and, and I won't say where I work, but I work for a, a major company, very a, 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 a fortune 500 company. And so the way it works is our company has a C CEO. We have a COO, a CFO. We have all these things, but you know what we do? We have meetings. And so sometimes we have meetings with the lower people and they allow us to express our desires and, and how we want the company to go. And our CEO, he listens to that. And he takes it into consideration. And it's the same way when you're running a household. At the end of the day, the man is the CEO. And as a woman, we give our input. And, 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 it, and it works that way in my, in my household. I give my husband input and he respects my opinion and he takes it into consideration. But at the end of the day, he is the final say-so. You know what Thank I'm saying? You. That's just how it goes. And what, unfortunately, what women don't understand, do you know how much weight that takes off of our shoulders? Right. And and that's one of the things that women didn't understand. They said, yeah. that, and, and I mean, it's true. Some of them do, but they said they wanted this and they said they wanted that. But when they were given the responsibility, you found out that they actually want to blame everybody for their bad decisions. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is this. It's hard to be in control of your life. And that's why a lot of people want to hear the rhetoric that black people can't help themselves. And this is that because when you realize you have the ability to help yourself, you realize you have to look in the mirror and you're responsible yes. for where you are in your yep. life. People don't want that because yep. you have to then take control of your life. It's easy to be told what to do all day. And that's why a lot of people are comfortable. And, and and I mean this goes another, but a lot of people get very very comfortable and 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 just regular nine to fives, and they don't want to go out and do their own things sometimes because it's e it's easier to just have somebody tell you what to do than it is to make your own decisions and have to deal with the consequences of those decisions. Like that's just the facts and, of it. And the thing about it is, I don't want to put down you know a nine to five person. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want to put that down. But but here's the thing, like you're saying, 
like you're saying, now this goes, you know, beyond race, but a lot of people, it's very easy to have someone else step in and have control over your life. For for black people in particular, unfortunately, that's why we have these debates about reparations, these things, because we like the idea of the government coming in and helping us and, and doing this for us. And to be honest with you, I'm gonna say, I don't want no reparations. I don't want that. No. I have control of my own life. I'm going to say this. This is going on into politics, but we'll, we'll go there and we'll leave. We've all been to the DMV, right? Sorry, that's my dog, if you heard that shaking. Um, does anybody like going to the DMV? Who, who is like, oh, yay, I'm going to the DMV? The, right. DMV, the DMV is a government-ran organization, right? But yet somehow we want the government to come could come in and control our lives. We want the government government to control our health care. So every time you go to the doctor, it's going to be like going to the DMV. You don't want the government in control of your life. And so I sometimes I think that black people in general, we're afraid to take control of our own lives. We like the idea of government handouts, government helping us. I'm all about no. I want to control my own life, but we need to stop being afraid to control our own lives. It's kind Bingo. of like when slavery first ended, you had two different types of slaves, right? Bingo. Oh, had, go talk okay, to him. <laughs> so, so slavery <laughs> ended. You have some slaves. Now, you have like the ones like Harriet Tubman, the ones she led. They were like, I am not trying to be a slave. I want to get up out of here. I want to go up north and I want freedom. I want autonomy. I want to do my thing. But you have some slaves that didn't want to leave the plantation. And what was that saying? I don't I don't remember who said this, but they but I think they said that she said, I don't know if it's true or not, that she could she could have freed so many more slaves if they knew that they were enslaved. Right. And that's the thing. Some people are not trying to leave the plantation. They like the idea of masses, um, 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 uh, God, I can't, I'm losing my words. Um, the masters, um, um, covering his, his, um, it, Just, what, what, I see, I, I know exactly what you're, I, I, I get where you're going. Saying. They like, the, they like for him to have the authority because it makes yeah, it easier. They, they like, they liked his covering. They like what he can do, but that the real, the real, um, the real person, they were like, I don't, I don't want masters, masses, masses. You know what I mean? Authority over. I want to live my own life. I right. want to be free. So I would like give give me liberty or give me death. I want to go up north. And so they right. followed her and they get they got up north because they want to freedom. But there's so many blacks right now that are still on that plantation. They still looking for rep reparations. They still looking for a handout. There's still and, a lot of men black a black this is, out here right now. This, yeah. this is full circle to allowing women to lead yes. your culture. That is a very yes. feminine mindset. You don't very. understand that when people give you things, they're going to control what happens in your life. Yes. You think the government is gonna give you health care yeah. and all these this a uh, check yeah. every month and that's socialism. Yeah. Once they do that, they're going to yeah. then control what you can do. Now you can't go to McDonald's and have that burger you want. No, you right? can't. Because no, you now can't. it's on the it's on the whole government's health care. Now and they people, control what you eat. And, and, and so it's like if, if people just don't get this concept and it's very, very feminine for. And that's why that's my biggest problem with the Democratic Party. I Me mean, personally is is because a lot of the 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 uh, a lot of what it's based behind now is is who's mostly oppressed and how can we give them free things from the government? We and for me, I don't think that that's what black Olympics people need right, right now. now. Just me personally. Just that's right now. We but, are in the oppression Olympics. Who can be more oppressed? Who can be the most victim? And listen, this all goes, listen, uh, history repeats itself. Everything comes full circle. It goes back to that old proverb that you heard. You give a man, uh, you give a man a fish, or you teach them to fish, right? If you give a man a fish, you feed him for that one day. But if you teach him to fish, he can feed himself for a lifetime. Right. No one comes into this life entitled to anything. No, and so again, this is gonna go back to that woman's mindset, a very entitled mindset. Going back again to that women and children first. I'm a woman, I'm entitled. No, you're not. Nobody owes you. You come into the, this earth not entitled, okay? You, you don't deserve anything if you get <laughs> anything in this life praise the lord but you're not entitled to nothing and so okay this is i kind of i'm kind of going off topic but um let me just say this point because it's in my head right now <laughs> so remember how we were talking earlier about how women black women have this they they, they created the white standard of beauty they did right so right. here's my thing we have in our minds as as black people that that white people are just living these perfect lives 
and I'm saying this, I've been around white people, they have problems too. Everybody got problems. And they come and they come in, in different levels. And I'm about to blow your mind if you're ready for this. I'm all I'm all ears. I'm I'm sitting here <laughs> listening to you and and I'm just like so much of what you're saying I say it, I, I think it comes different off of a woman. I think that's great for both perspectives. And I'm happy that there's a woman saying this because other women <laughs> and, and men alike need to hear this coming from a woman. And yeah. like, yeah, bro, you, if you ain't, if you want handouts, you, that's, that's seen as weakness. Okay. It's from women weak. too. That's it's, a woman's, a woman needs hand, a woman needs help. We do because we're weaker. We need help. I need a man because physically I'm just not strong enough. I need a man and it's okay. But what I'm saying is this, there's so many people born in this life with so many different problems and issues. There are people born in this life with physical disabilities. There, there are certain people that are born mentally disabled, physically disabled, all Bingo. of these different things. We're not entitled to anything. If Bingo. you're born on this earth and you have a healthy body and a healthy mind, then you have an advantage. You have a privilege. We have this word called white privilege. Uh, excuse me. Um, please forgive me. I get tongue tied sometimes. Oh, um, you could. You are. Right. We yeah, got all night. <laughs> yeah, I, I, sometimes I, I, um, I used to stutter when I was little, so I, I struggle with it sometimes. But um, we have this word called white privilege. That is bull crap. If you are born into this world, and if you are healthy and able bodied, and if you are on top of that, born in the United States, guess what? You're privileged. Even People don't understand, black. and that's why I say travel because they yeah. don't understand that just living in America, we yeah. get we can look. Listen to you. We have fat homeless people. Like people, we have, you can drink your bath water here. I mean, it's not good. It's, it doesn't taste, it's, you might get some fluoride in you. Right? It's not great. Yes. But these are the privilege. If you are here and you have a house and a car, you're within the top 5% richest people in the planet. Hello. So to Hello. Answer, so just being here is such a and and I and I want to put this up because this is the mentality that I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it quick. It might es escape me a little bit here. Um, one second, one second. No worries. Um, it was from Adrian, and he's saying that. Um, he's saying, uh, nah, they dropped bombs on Black Wall Street in Tulsa. Uh, oh, I want it's reparations. Gone. Here's the thing. It's Here's here, Adrian. I, I this is just specifically for you. I get it. OK, wow. I get, we've had it hard. I get it. We've had it hard. This is what I say all the time. But you expect the people that bombed Tulsa to give you something. <laughs> you, you get where I'm going? Like you expect the people they, you're talking about atrocities and you're going to stay stagnant because you expect them to give you something they can. And it's nice when we give reparations to like Asian Americans and other people have gotten reparations. And I believe it would be right for African Americans to get that too, because it of the suffering. I get it, but I'm not expecting that. And I'm not waiting on it. I'm not going to tell my daughter I can't get her braces because the white man gave me my reparations yet. I'm not can, doing it. Can I'm I, tell you how I see it. Can I tell you how I see it? Mr. Poor man. I call you Mr. Go ahead. Um, here's, here's the way I see it. My um, my ancestors, you know, were brought over here. And here's the thing. They, they tend to think that we were just stolen up out of Africa. That is not what's, that's not what's happened. Our ancestors sold us. OK, make that clear. Number one. And so he who was his name? Adrian. He yeah, he, was, yeah. he, he believes he um, deserves these reparations. Let me explain to, to Mr. Adrian. You're not going to get those reparations. What they do is they hold those rep that thought of reparations over your head like a carrot. And they have you following after reparations when you can be taking full advantage of all the opportunities here in America. Instead of that, you're waiting for these reparations. So while you're waiting for reparations, guess what's happening? Jose, he's building a construction business. OK, thank you. Uh, um, um, uh, I don't know the Asian name. Uh, but, uh, the but, uh, Vietnamese, I think the Vietnamese in this country. Okay. own about. I, I think they have about. They run about 80% of the nail salon. Vietnamese, and this is specific to Vietnamese, they own about 80% yes. of the nail salons in yes, America. Sir. Well, we're That's sitting because around. they make those and they bring their people. I've seen a, a, a Hispanic man when I was in California because I, you know, I went to, uh, I played rugby, so I was there at the Olympic Training Center down in Chula Vista, California. I've seen a man, he couldn't speak a, a speed of, speak speak a lick of English. He had a line wrapped around Walmart selling uh, selling the elotes, the, the Mexican Hello. car. Oh, yeah. He had a little car. He had was a little cart, 
a little mayo, a little, you know, whatever paprika, whatever the salt, whatever the stuff you put on. That's all he had. But he had, and I'm like, he's charging eight dollars per per whatever minus he cost. He's problem. probably pocketing about four dollars per, and he has a line wrapped around this building. And, so what the liberals like, do, and because and it's, you can't blame them completely because we fall for this. What they do is they keep us like what was the brother's name again? An Andre or um. Uh, uh, Adrian. Uh, Adrian. So what brothers like Adrian do, they want to sit around and wait for some reparations. Now, mind you, not a black person alive today has picked a lick of cotton for free as a slave. Not not a bit of cotton as a free. But we want to sit around and wait for reparations while the Hispanics, the Asians, everybody comes over here and takes advantage of what our ancestors built. Help, excuse me, help to build. We want to sit around and let them come in and take over. Now, my, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting excited. Let me calm down. But um, I'm from California and I watched the illegals uh, uh, come in and take over and run the black communities out while we're sitting there with our hands out waiting for, 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 for something to be given to us. L let's just say we deserved it. That's fine. You're not going to get it. What they've done is they've held that over our head as that carrot that we're not going to get to win our vote. And people like Adrian keep falling for it. Get over it, my brother. Start your business. Take advantage of, of the opportunities you have in this country that your forefathers helped to build. Take advantage. We were born here. We have all. We are Americans like anybody else. Take advantage. The, the liberals want to tell you that you are not an American, that you're not entitled. We absolutely are. And how I know, because there are black millionaires and billionaires, and we can take full advantage. Stop waiting for the handout, brothers right. and sisters. Stop. Re regardless of how much people dislike you because of your color, they like the color green a little more than they dislike you. Exactly. So, Everybody you likes you provide green. value. Best Everybody believe. likes green. Everybody. That's right. There's no victims. And I will say this, even if you are a victim, I've said this to a friend of mine. Let's say you are a victim. I think, did I say this already? I don't want to repeat myself. But, no, but you can, I, I mean, say whatever you want to say. I might be repeating myself, but like I said, even if you are truly a victim, you're walking down the street, minding your business, and they jump you. They jump you. They beat you. They take your money. They leave you bloodied and battered on the side of the road. That's a true victim, right? But what I'm saying is, even that person who deserves to be a victim, do not be one. Because being a victim is not going to help you. Brothers and sisters, listen uh -huh. and hear my voice. Being a victim will not help you. You don't be a victim. Be a survivor. And that's what we are as, as descendants of slaves here. We are victors. Stop being a victim. I don't want the reparations because I don't need it. I don't need it. I, I have full right to start a business. I can work hard. I can go to school. I can do it. Please, you are being manipulated by that. I'm sorry, I'm getting too, I'm getting too intense. So let me calm down a little bit. Oh, I, I, I'm <laughs> listening to everything you're saying. And I I love, just, you you just see me just nodding my head in agreement. It, it's, it's, um, it's difficult because I've, I've been shunned by so many people because of what I believe. And they think that I hate my race. And they hate myself. And I don't. I love us. And I see so much because we have potential. Back, back when we were at our worst, we had we had the highest employment rates, the highest marriage rates at, at the at, like you said, the height of the Jim Crow right after slavery. And we fall. We fall in and sunk in so low because we have been manipulated. Stop. Stop. We we are strong people. We are a beautiful people and black women come in full circle to our hair. And I know it's like. With, with hair, why are we talking about hair? This is how God created us. And so, and so let me just say this real quick. I don't want to get religious. But what I'm saying is, what, whatever your belief is, who you, who you, whoever you believe your creator is, the awesome thing about it is he made us all unique. He gave Asians them slanted eyes. Their eyes so slanted, sometimes you don't even know if their eyes are open, right? <laughs> but how amazing that is. He, he made white people. He, he put a lot of variability in white people. They got all kinds of colors of hair and eyes. He gave black people this deep, rich melanin. And yes, this kinky hair. No, our hair is not silky, but he made our hair unique so we can do special things with that. How about we all embrace what God created us to be. And it's okay if all society thinks that white is, is better or more beautiful, who cares? God made you beautiful and you unique. So you embrace that. Even if you don't like it, embrace it. It's what you are. 
Right. And I wish that we would have more love for ourselves. And anyway, sorry, I don't mean to, you know, get all weird. Nyla, I can open at we're at about an hour and a half. I know wow, you got right? stuff to add. <laughs> I can so open bad. this thing up. I can open this thing up for callers and we can have some people on or how do you feel? Do you want to continue? Well, do you want to? I'm a little nervous because, you know, as you know, I'll be very honest. Yes, I speak boldly, but I'm, I'm, I'm very introverted. And so, um, be, because of my, my history and losing so many people, it's a little difficult. If, if the audience wants to open up and, and come on and, and sure, absolutely. I will be sure that if anybody, if it goes that way, you'll be all right. Because I'll, I'll be here too. I'll, I'll be here with you. And so, as a woman, any- I am absolutely cool with you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anybody want to hop in? Let's go ahead with the, uh, I'm going to pin this up. Anybody want to come in, ask Nyla some questions? She has some interesting stuff to say. If you didn't hear it, you lost in the sauce, man. Keep listening, I guess. <laughs> Um, make sure y'all hit that like subscribe button. I will be tagging her channel in this video. Um, I'll put a link to her channel in the description when this is all said and done. Um, can, make sure y'all I go subscribe you? to her, but we got Leo in the building. I've oh, seen Leo okay. before. What's, what's up, Leo? What's going on, brother? Good, good. We hanging in there. You, you did you hear the show? Man, every bit of it, every bit of it. I got, I got at least, I got at least 50 warriors in here. Y'all need to be spamming up, uh, here. I know Leo in the chat. Let him know that I've been doing work. So, but here's the deal, guys. This is why I got everybody here. I wanted you guys to really get the information that I teach on a regular basis, what poor man does on a regular basis. And I've been, I've been utilizing uh, (laughs) his platform as mine. People be like, what's your, what's your podcast? I'm like, "Mm -hmm." it's poor man's podcast on YouTube. The reason why I'm doing that (laughs) because I'm smart. I'm networking. I'm like, okay, we're going to get him to where he needs to be. I'm in touch with the brother. He's okay, cool. All right. Appreciate y'all. Come on. All right. Come on, man. I need about, it's got to be at least 50 of y'all. Come on. <laughs> come on. Where are the, where the women at? Where are the women at? Come on. Um. Yeah. So listen, so I'm networking so that I'm doing that. But y'all, if y'all, y'all hearing it from her, I speak this in my live and I've told you guys that the, that's their nature. They are the way they are. And we have to look at it like this. We don't look at a crocodile or anything that's in the wild and say, oh, they're bad because they do that. They're not they're not bad. That's just their nature. Y'all got to Y'all got to be able to uh, distinguish the difference. Their nature is not bad. If you want to see it like that, then that's on you. But I see it as if we don't step up as men, we're going to lose. We're going to lose because they are they are now stepping into positions to where they think they think that they can fend for themselves. And they have no idea that the very platforms that they're complaining about men on is been built by men and everything that you will not be able to maintain your quality of life, the quality of life that you have today if men were wiped off the planet. But it's hard for me to say, but I wanted you guys to hear it from Nyla. So I do have a question, Nyla. I do want to ask you this. And oh, I first before that question, I want to say you have a responsibility. We and and we're tired as men. I'm tired of our the the elder women pushing off this responsibility of getting the other the women that come uh, after you right. I really need you on this. I really need you to continue to work with us. Um, and, and I know that you're, you're very humble, but we need you, Nyla. We really do. Thank you. Uh, so here's my question. Uh, my question is, um, let's see, how do I start? Well, I, I truly just want to know, do you think that women could turn? Cause there's a lot of women that were saying that they, they agree with you, but they don't, they don't agree with the part that you're saying that we can't turn this ship around. I, I agree with you. I don't think we can turn it around, but I'm willing to die on my shield. Right. Mm. But why do you, why do you say we can't turn it around? They, every, all the women were agreeing with you in the comment section of that, uh, the, the last video that you did, but they didn't agree on the fact that you said we can't turn it around. Why do you say we can't turn it around? Oh boy. You asked a, a difficult question. Um, and, and so this is where I don't want to go too religious, no. but there are certain things that are prophetic. Okay. And certain things have to take place. Um, oh man, this, this is, you asked a tough one. 
um, certain things are prophetic. And I, and I say this, and I said this the last, the last um, show that I was on with, uh, with the poor man. Um, even if you don't think, I, I don't believe that this could be turned around, but, but even if you believe it, it can or whether it can't be, at the end of the day, you strive for what is right. Okay, so me personally, I don't think it can be turned around because we've been indoctrinated for too long and and prophetically this has to happen. But at the end of the day, in your own personal and individual lives, you still strive for what is righteous. Okay, that's the only way I'm able to answer that in my own household. I have two sons of my of my own. I worry about them. I worry about what the world is going to look like when they're men. I worry about the type of wives that they're going to have if they're if, if there's going to be a United States or a world where they can still strive in. I, 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 I worry about it on one hand, but I still strive for what is right and what is righteous. That's it. So it doesn't matter if, if this can be turned around or not, whether I think right. it or not, I still strive for what is right. I still teach my sons the right way. I still submit to my husband because it's the right thing. And so every individual, we strive to do the right thing. I'm on this podcast because I want the truth to be spoken. And, and it says, and I know we, everyone doesn't believe, you know, scripture, I get that, but truth in the end times are going to be, is going to be very difficult to find. And so anyone that knows the truth, you spread it, you speak it, you live it, you do your best and you keep on pushing forward. This might be turned around. I don't know. I don't believe it will be, but I'm right. still going to push for what's and this right is for this is why I say okay. this is why I say, gentlemen, that's why you have to select. You're going to have to deal with some shit anyway. Right. But you're going right. to have to select from the best caliber of women that works for you and your agenda. All right. You're only going to get up. You're only going to get about seven, <laughs> like sixty to seventy percent of the things that you actually want. In that so make sure that, that you have a, a a a core belief system, and she's on board with that. For me, it would be she. It would be um, her. Her. She. She has to be a God fearing woman. All right. That's number one. So that is th- the reason why that's essential, guys, is because it puts her in her femininity. If she's not willing to submit to to the Creator, oh, she damn sure is not going to submit to a man. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. She is not going to. <laughs> I got two chats going on. Um, yeah, so she's not willing to submit to the creator. She's definitely not going to submit to you as a man. There are certain things that you have to look for. And I, I I honestly, I recommend that a lot of men shit test that woman, uh, right from the jump. And I mean, don't even waste your time in these conversations with her that go nowhere. Ask her from the jump that, uh, if she can aid in your agenda, what you got going on. This is my plan. I want to know, can you cook? I want to know are are you how you are going to respond when I'm angry, right? Because if if Leo, ahead. let me step can in I and say this though, because oh. I, I agree with y'all. But for a man to do that, he has to be willing to do what a man is supposed to do too. See, a lot of time, and, and I mean, this is this is a fault with a lot of people in red pill community. Sometimes is it's it's I wouldn't say it's filled, but it does have some men in there that just believe that you can just go out and be a bum. And and use these ideas that we're creating to build strong families in your own way. And you could flip them and twist them to make it so that women are supposed to do whatever you want them to do if you're a bum. Now well, you gotta have not submit by default. Them. Should they not submit by default? That my stance is that they should submit by default. I don't even care what that man has. What is your stance on that? If if a man wants a woman to uh be on his ship so that he could take them both to the island as i like to say he has to have a ship (laughs) you know what i'm saying so i Uh get the submission part i get that a woman's supposed to have a certain respect for a man um but if if there's a man that is not has not proven 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 himself to be no because uh, unfortunately what we don't like to admit it's what we don't like to admit, it. Leo, is there are a lot of men out there that have a very feminine mindset. We have a lot of men out there that aren't going to get you to the place you need to be. We have a lot of men out there that are going to get you pregnant and walk away. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a lot. There's a small minority, but th- these men are wreaking havoc. And a lot of women are falling into these traps because they're using these ideas to manipulate them. So if he doesn't, if he hasn't shown that he's capable of doing his part of the bargain, as a woman, I don't think a woman should be, have to do her, her side if you ain't doing your side as a man you should be the first one in if you a man in terms of leading if that's what you're gonna do 
should should a, should okay. a woman submit by default just because of the way men are structured? Okay, should can I? Can, is okay? I jump in here. Yeah. Okay, so here here's what I believe. You're gonna have different levels of men. You're gonna have what you call the high value men, the men that are working 80 hours a week, and then you're gonna have the men that are they're 40 you know, $40,000 a year men. And that's just where they're going to be. What I believe is that there is a woman for every man. And if you are that man, that's a $40,000 a year man, and you're not trying to go above and beyond, there's a woman for you. At the end of the day, our role as a woman is to submit to our man. And if you're that type of woman for that type of man, that's just who you are. But our role is to be an inspiration to that man. So let's say your man is that $40,000 a year man, then guess what? That's who you are. So you inspire that man. And I truly believe in my heart of hearts, when we are properly in our role, even that man that's making that $40,000 a year, when we submit to him, love him, we can encourage Absolutely. him and Absolutely. inspire him for more. Doesn't mean he's going to be more because some men are, that's just what they are. Absolutely. But you're that woman for that man. That's what it is. It's Absolutely. Some, some, some men are and, high and value. I'm sorry, I just wanted to yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Nyla. I'm sorry. I'm cutting you off again. Go ahead. Oh, no, no worries. Um, some, some men are those men that that make them six figures and they have that type of woman. Some men are that forty thousand, thirty thousand dollar man. And you're going to have that woman. But at the end of the day, our role is still our role. I am Bingo. here. Women are here to support you. So even that $40,000 a year man, he still is supposed to have a woman. Now, to be honest with you, is she going to be like, the, you know, they say a baddie and all this kind of, probably not. She probably going to be a little bit overweight, may not be that pretty, you know, all that kind of, but that's, that's your level. That's her level. Y'all go <laughs> together and y'all be together. But at the end of the day, our role, pure and simple, is to be there for you, whatever man that we fit. So if you 250 pounds or whatever, then you going to get a man that's making 40,000 and you need to be inspirational and you need to serve him because that's what Hector gets, right? Mm-hmm. Don't Hector right. get that? Maria right, he, looks like a refrigerator and that's his woman and they love each other and you build your legacy from that. That's what it is. Exactly. Nyla, and, and and I, I think, I'm sorry, Leo. Let me, I think I dis. I don't think that we disagree. I think that mm-hmm. um, we are kind of just, here's the thing. I, I'm talking about men that are not doing anything. Okay. So if you're a $40,000 a year, man, if you're 20 years old and you're a $20,000, you you got to build at some point. I get what you're saying. I'm talking about, uh, and, and my idea too, and, and this is just a disclaimer, my idea that I just said can also be flipped by women to say, I don't have to submit to a man unless he's providing provide 40,000. Like I said before, not maybe in major cities, but if you move to the Midwest and a lot of other places where it's just a lot of empty space, y'all want to be in New York and you're going to have a hard time there. But in a lot of places, $40,000 is plenty. So that is a man that deserves respect. I believe that is a man that can protect and provide. I believe now, if you want to go into hypergamy mode and because you've been on Instagram all day, uh, you want more than that. And so you abandon that man for what you think you could go and get into the world. That's up to you. So, yes, I do believe that forty thousand dollars. If you're an adult man, if you're obviously you, you know, if you're if you're doing something as a man. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just, you know, I'm I'm going to jump in really quick. In my belief, I believe masculinity in general deserves the respect of women. Period. We're talking about dollar amounts, and in, in in my mind, whether a man is making a million dollars or whether he's making a little bit, if he's out here and he's working hard, masculinity in general deserves the respect of femininity. That is the proper place. Now, society and 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 all the are, 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 is going to kind of put everybody in their right place so certain women deserve men that make more and certain women and men deserve to be together if they're making a little bit less that's just kind of what it is but at the end of the day um um masculinity deserves respect period now if you do have a man a man that's out here not doing nothing not working you don't get no woman no and I think that, I think that's clear if you just not try yeah. to work at all you don't get a woman you know what I mean no yeah. you don't but but there's men out here, and shout out to the ones that are blue collar. There, listen, listen. We want to talk about all this high value stuff. There are certain men out here, and one of my dearest friends of 20 years is a custodial supervisor, clean schools. We need that. 
that's necessary. We need to keep these clean, these schools clean so our kids can learn. So that man, in my mind, deserves respect as well. And he deserves a woman that's going to respect the work that he does. Even though he does not make $100,000, he deserves a woman that will respect him. Is he going to get the baddest girl out there? No, but he deserves a good woman that's going to treat him right. Now, now the weight, that's a whole nother thing. Even if your man makes twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty dollars, forty thousand a year, a woman still needs to keep her weight down, and she still needs to be feminine. Period. And you Nyla, that, you serve that, your that's man. a good segue into this question right here. What do you think of? Can, is a woman? This, this is going to be good, y'all. Is a woman hurting herself if she is a a a four or five? Uh, if she's a four or five, is she hurting herself by 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 making a lot of money? Because typically the way women work is if they if she's a four or five and she's making 200K a year, she tends to want a man that is either on her le on her level of income. Right. Mm. Or more. So but the men that are on her level of income or more don't, are not shooting for her. Or well, what, what is a woman hurting herself? Of course. I, th I think we know this. At the end of the day, um, a woman's I keep saying that. I keep, keep saying that. But it doesn't matter what a woman makes. I th 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 our role is our role. I don't care if we make it a million dollars. Our role is our role for the betterment of society and not just black people, but every race. Uh, our role is our role. So in my mind, even if you're a woman that's making a million dollars, whatever, you still need to be in submission to a man. Because, because honestly, the women that are making those higher those high amounts of money like that, they're the ones that are causing destruction in our society. Because those are the ones that will not submit to our man, to a man. And that's in the, the one the man needs to be in a position of authority. So, so basically, when a woman is making that type of money, she's all in it for herself. She she she's not about legacy and and create and and, and all those and, and the generation. She's not thinking about that. She's thinking about herself and making herself money. And that does not help society, family units, legacy. Those are the things that help society. So so in my mind, a woman making that type of money means nothing because that money is going to die with her. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So women can make that kind of money, but are they going to submit? Probably not. They're not. But but Truth, and, they're and, gonna and die that? with that money, and it's gonna mean nothing because no legacy has been created with her. It dies with her. But when a man makes that, like I'm gonna talk about my husband, okay? Um, I mean, we we work hard, we struggle. You know, we're not rich people, but he, he, he talks about legacy. So the business that he does, he wants he, what he's trying to do. He's trying to build a business that his sons um, can inherit if they, if they want and to continue on. What a woman does, if you're on what they call it, um, what's that that site where they um, uh, OnlyFans? OnlyFans. Thank you. I'm sorry. So I so already if, knew what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. So if you're on Only OnlyFans, is that really creating a legacy for your children being on OnlyFans? Is that a business that you can pass down? See, that's the thing. That's the mind of a woman. She's in it for herself. Only fans and, and the ones on um, on Instagram, that's not about legacy. That's mm. about making money and promoting themselves. That's why we cannot go be led by women because we are irrational like children, like dogs. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Hey, that's a whole mouth. Hey, Leo, let me go ahead. I got another person. Yo. I'm going to get you back up in here in a second. Okay, cool. I got All another right, person in, in the chat. Let me go ahead and bring them in. Uh, right. Appreciate you for coming on, bro. I'm going to have you yeah, back. Yeah. I'm in the room. All right. All right, Exile Lioness. Let's see what you got to say. You up. Hey, guys. How's it going? How you doing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey. Um, hey, I was tuning in. And look, I have a channel of my own that I do. And it's mostly red pill content. But I have a question for Nyla because... It's so refreshing to hear a woman talk as you do. But I do want to hear Thank your you. opinion on red pill. And do you believe that women can be red pilled? Absolutely. I'm red pilled. That's why I was kind of broke <laughs> down my channel. Um, that's why I call it Red Femme um, Diaries. I'm absolutely red pilled. And red pill is just not about um, feminism. In my mind, when I say red pill, it's that pill that wakes you up to reality. Right. Not I just 
male and right female and, I love, and, and just but, just to yes. put because a lot of people ask i like to think of it as human nature and i think it's important for men and women to both know human nature so they don't fall victim to it uh so that's that's just kind of my there. idea of red pill me personally I do agree, but there's one thing that I wanted to propose to you all. The reason why I kind of have a question mark there is I understand red pill. I understand it's uh, recognizing reality and no longer falling for the fantasies. But the other thing I wanted to bring up is that because women in the West, we have this power that even if we do recognize the problems, we are still able to turn around and use the system against men. At our own whim like we could be red pill one day and then the next day there are women who literally turn around and divorce their husbands and take them for all they got you know so that's why i say is it is it really a woman can a woman truly honestly call herself red pill and still be female and live with this with this mind and these emotions that we have can we really understand reality as it is or is it just well, and, and, and that's that's why I will say on the last podcast, I like to be very transparent. If you were if you remember, poor man, I talked about the bitterness that that women serve. And I, I'm very transparent. And I admit that there's times where I serve my husband and my family in bitterness. There are times where I'm, I'm mad. I don't I mean, I work a job. And so sometimes I get upset. But because my mind is in a frame that I understand the bigger picture. I understand the legacy that I'm creating, even those moments, because I'm a woman where I get bitter and I don't want to do this. And, uh, I'm mad. I do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so, and a lot of pe- people don't say, a lot of people say that, um, you know, they don't agree with me because I feel that we're, we're lost and we're gone. I still believe that, but I still do what I'm supposed to do regardless of what happens around me. Um, most women will not understand this. Mm-hmm. I understand that but regardless if every other woman does not get this, I get it for my family. I'm about to say my last name. I don't want to say that, but I'm doing this for my husband's legacy. You know what I'm saying? So even those times, there's sometimes I do my duties and I'm joyful. I'm glad, but there are moments where like, geez, I, you know, I worked a job. I got to come here and I got to do this. I got to do that. But I look at the big picture at the end of the day, when I submit and I do my duty as a woman, oh, my legacy is going to be beautiful because I want to mirror for my boys what they need in a wife. God bless me with boys. So I want to show them what they need to look for in a wife so that my grandchildren will be blessed and my great grandchildren will be blessed and my great great grandchildren when I'm dead and gone. Unfortunately, the way a woman's mind works, we don't really think about that. Well, I wanted to ask you something really quickly regarding women in your family. Um, I am traditional as well. I'm traditional wife, like all the way, but I actually do stay home. I don't work. Um, I wanted to ask you, what did your mother do when you came out as this way? Have you always been this way or did you did you have a waking up moment? And what did your mother do in response to seeing her daughter be so opposite of what she is? I'm assuming you are the opposite or? Oh boy, um, I kind of talked about it earlier. Um, my father uh, married my mother when she had two children already outside of, um, uh, outside of him. So, um, but I did see my mother, um, she, she, she worked, she worked a job, um, but she still cooked and did all those things. But my mother, the black community is probably a little bit different. I'm sorry, if you don't mind me asking, what's your ethnicity? Uh, I'm Middle Eastern. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm part of the black community, so it's very different than Middle Eastern because you guys are raised with that way of being traditional. I was not right. necessarily raised that way, but I did see my mother serving, you know, my father. I saw somewhat of that, but because I was in California, I saw other races. And so I under, I, I picked up on how to do it. M- I'm very nervous because I don't, my mother may hear this. And so she's probably not going to like, you know, what I have to say, but does it matter? Because this is the truth regardless, whether I was raised this way or not, um, this is what it is. And this is reality. Um, I, 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 there are certain things that I'm saying on this podcast that my mother is not going to like, but um, it is what it is. I, I, I just go on facts, reality, and truth. 
no matter how hurtful it is, you have what an advantage. You, how did she respond? What's that? How did she respond to you? She hasn't yet because she, she doesn't know all these things. I called her before I came on this podcast. I said, Mom, I'm going to podcast. And I said, you may not like. She wants to hear this. She, she's not live right now because I didn't send her the link. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. But um, this is going to be very hurtful for her to hear. But um, that's despite there's a bigger picture. All I would say is for you, you were raised Middle Eastern, so you understand some of these concepts. But as black American descendants of slaves, unfortunately, we've lost that. But like I said, despite that, the truth is the truth regardless. And our roles are our roles, despite of how we were raised. My mother will probably hear this and it's going to be painful for her, but still the truth regardless. And so I tell everybody, go for truth, go for right righteousness, go for the right way, and you can't lose. Poor Men Podcast, I want to say thank you for having me on because I have been watching you grow ever since, I believe, 7,000 subscribers, and you have been growing incredibly fast, and I appreciate your work. I watch you daily because you produce daily, so I watch you pretty much daily, and I, I love your content. And I do appreciate, I really you appreciate having Nyla. That. I don't know where you found Nyla, but it is a blessing to have a woman like her speaking. She speaks like one of my aunties. She talks just how my aunties talk. They are very raw. They are very to the point. They don't care about feelings. You can sit there and cry out a river and they will say, what do you cry for? Thank you so much for that. It, it's, it's very helpful. And like I've said several times, unfortunately, because of the toxicity and, 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 and what's going on in the black community, the things that I'm saying are not welcomed. And so unfortunately, like I said, I've lost uh, pretty much all of my family and friends because of the way I speak. But I will accept that because I care. I, it's not it's not about being black. It's about society as a whole. The you Western know what I'm saying? Society, as a whole. That's what I say. But, it's We're arrowheading this thing because it's, it's almost like a social experiment, all this stuff. We're arrowheading it. But as you can see, according to the data, all the other demographics, especially in America, are following suit. I have a question for y'all, though. Um, Both of y'all or uh, whoever wants to answer, whatever it may be. With knowing the information you know now, um, and I guess it would, this would be geared more towards Nyla since she is since she thinks that, and I do disagree in this exact point, this specific point, that you can't, that there is no hope for women. I do want to ask Nyla, if you had a daughter right now, what would you do to raise her to be, uh, uh, to understand her roles as a traditional woman or whatever it may be? What would you do to, to uh, uh, what should a man or what should, what would a woman do to raise uh, a daughter in today's world? Oh, dear. Well, yeah, I don't have a daughter. You know, God bless me with sons. But I, I would teach her to follow me. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I struggle with my own femininity because I wasn't not raised this way. But I would teach her what her role is and the beauty of And, and I, I think we talked about it earlier. I want to when we end this, I want to talk about the beauty of true feminism. And our true roles. And that's what I would teach my daughter. The beauty of that. So many women, they choose their careers and their degrees. And they do that out of fear. And you should never make decisions out of fear. They choose their careers and their jobs because, well, if he leaves me and if he does that, then I'll have this to fall back on. But in my heart of hearts, when you're a good woman and you're a submissive woman, a man's not going to leave that. Now, of course, there's always exceptions to the rule, but typically, if you embrace your role as a woman, being inspirational to your man, being submissive, being beautiful, being loving, what man is going to leave that? And so if I had a daughter, and I have nieces, but I'm not in a position to be able to teach them this because they have their right. own and they're not accepted, accepting of this, but if I had my own daughters, I would teach her what it means to be a woman. And, and can I say this really quick? I don't want to go off charge, but I see women as flowers. Okay. So listen, listen to this. Everything in nature has a purpose, right? So if we look at a tree, what's the pur purpose of a tree? A tree can produce fruit, right? Fruit that we can eat. 
a tree can also produce shade, right? When it's hot, you know, animals can go under the shade. There's a purpose there. When we look at grass, grass is there. It's beautiful. And it's something that we can walk on instead of walking in the dirt and the mud, right? The sun. Think about the sun. The sun. The, the temperature of the sun, I think I read somewhere, is like 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. But because it's of its position in the solar system, it's just hot enough to warm the skin of a tomato in the midst of summer. So everything oh. in nature has a purpose. What is the purpose of a flower? What purpose does it have? You say, wow. oh, the bees. Well, no, the bees pollinate the flower, but what's the purpose of a flower? It's to, to provide beauty. So I have a home and we just planted a bunch of flowers. We we planted some rose bushes. It's not going to produce fruit. The purpose of a flower is beauty. And what it did to our home, it increased its value. When you go into a neighborhood and they, all the neighbors and different people are, are, are planting flowers, it, this purpose is beauty. It helps the value of your home. Very similar to a woman. We are like flowers. We provide beauty. We inspire. We create value in a man when we help. We flowers help a neighborhood to create its value. Right. So as women, our value is to help our men. So if I had a daughter, I don't have one, but if I had a daughter, I would inspire her to be a flower, be as beautiful as possible, be as inspirational as possible, and you be the best helpmate to your husband that you can be because that is the best not only for your husband's legacy but for society as a whole but god did not bless me with a daughter he blessed me with sons but that's what i would tell her for my podcast i wanted to quickly respond to your question as well i don't have daughters of my own but i do have two stepdaughters and i was raised as a daughter in this culture and i can tell you from experience how we are raised, we are raised this way. The, the men of the family watch over us very closely. We don't sleep over at friends' house. We don't go out on weekends with other kids and their families. If we are going out, we go out with our family. We go out with our cousins or our sisters and brothers. That's it. We, we see our mother out in the garden working. She makes us come out and, and contribute. You must contribute. You cannot sit upstairs and watch TV. You have to come down and contribute. So we contribute always. We are always like, how can I say this? We're like the shadow of our mother and our aunties. Another thing that we do in our family is, well, not in my family, our culture. Um, the girls are trained to serve the boys and the men of the family. Even your brother, you will serve your brother. My uh, example, I have, uh, in living in my family, I still have my brother-in-law and my husband, right? I still serve my brother-in-law as if he were my husband almost. You know, I still serve him because he is still the man, he's a man in the house. You serve. And uh, what we have in our family is like, not in a family culture, the mother and the mother serves the father, the sister serves the brother. The, mm. the girls, the daughter, as the mother cooks, she helps. And when everyone is done, the daughter cleans off the table. She cleans off everything, you know, and serves tea. So that's kind of what we have going on. And another thing about modesty as well, being modest, um, seeing uh, all the women wearing uh, long skirts and dresses, always. The women, the older women never wear pants. So it's like women setting an example for the younger ones. The girls will never learn by you telling them, do this, do that. They learn from looking at you. They look at mom, they look at auntie, they look at grandma. What were they doing? If grandma was uncovered, mama was uncovered, I'm not going to cover. It's just the way it is. That's how we right. If wow. I can say, I, I so love what she's saying right now. And, and, and what breaks my heart about the Black community, the descendants of slaves, unfortunately, we do not have what she is saying. But... We can, we can create that. We can create that culture because we had it before. We, we, we can do it, but it will take the men standing up. What she's saying, oh my God, exile, exile lioness, that's so beautiful. Unfortunately, because of us, we don't have 
that built in us, but we want to turn that around. But like you said, poor man, we have to get outside of our communities and look at other cultures and see how they are doing things because we are a lost people. But and so here's a part where the, 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 there's a hope in me that wishes that we can turn this ship around, but we have to kind of deny ourselves, humble ourselves, and really listen to other cultures. What she's saying is so correct, but that takes a level of humility mm-hmm. that we, that our community struggles with because we have a deep seated self hatred. And this is tough. This is tough. But what she's saying is correct. And that's where we need to get to. Right. And, and I mean, truly speaking, a lot of the times we have women, they say that the, the, the women that are loose, the ones that are out, you know, out and about are the ones that are winning. And I try to explain to them all the time that just because you see them on Instagram smiling, it does not mean they're happy. A lot of these women are turning tricks for, for, for items, for a book, for a purse. That's what they're doing. Um, the, the A lot of times they're not happy. They may land Quavo or whoever it may be, but it's only temporary and never lasts because it's it, it's easy to obtain the momentary, the the uh, instant gratification or the instant attention of a man. But to, to maintain that attention is very hard. And a, a lot of women understand that. And so um, it, it, it's sad to see that so many women think that being uh unmodest being out and about being the one that's the loudest in the room being the one that's the one twerk you know that that's what the guys want and it's simply not true that may get what that may get a like okay it may get you to have sex with that woman but that's not going to get you uh that's not going to get you any kind of longevity um uh exile lioness is that your youtube channel Okay, I have to. I will be sending people your way. I'll probably clip this and make a video out of it. Send people your way. I really appreciate you for coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and grab somebody else. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. All Bye. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, can I, can okay, I let's see. This real quick before you bring yeah. somebody else. And, Absolutely. And and, and and we this is again like we keep coming for a full circle. And I think we kind of touched on that earlier in this conversation about how the black woman, unfortunately, because we're not necessarily on the top. I mean, they, they've done studies where they looked at um dating apps and typically it's black women and, and Asian men that are typically the less desi- the least desired. And so because of that position, a lot of times black women will go to extremes to get that attention. But my thing is if you can focus on getting one man, don't worry about being the thing that's desired. And so that's where we go askew. We right. want to be the, what, what do they call that thing? The, the beauty standard. Stop worrying about that. If you get one man that loves you, that's all that matters. Don't worry about being the beauty standard. Who cares? If you get one man that loves you and adores, adores you, you serve that man. That's your man. But we're so right. concerned with wanting all of the men to love us. Don't worry about that. I don't, beauty standard, who, who cares? Get one man. So unfortunately, you have a lot of women that are doing all this extra stuff. I mean, to the point, there are women out here, poor man, that are getting surgeries and dying. Oh, I, they, uh, K. Michelle, K. Michelle just got her surgery just completely taken. She got her plastic surgery completely taken out because it was mm. she was having health issues, but she wanted to maintain it because she thought that that was going to be the difference maker. And at the end of the day, she ended up manless, but just with more health issues. She wasn't like, worried about getting one man and serving one man. And hey, if you want to really go back, look at uh, Kanye West's mom. Didn't his mom die of some sort of uh, plastic surgery? And was she doing that for one man? No, she wasn't. She was doing that for the attention of men and 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 again in my particular profession i see women in their 40s 50s 200 250 pounds talking about tummy tucks and this and that to try to gain the adoration of multiple men that's the problem as a woman regardless if you're black white asian hispanic whatever what we're supposed to do you get one man you gain the attention of one man and you serve that one man and that's how you win. Mm. But we, we as black women, we want to be the standard. We feel that black women, not men, feel that white women are the standard. We created that. Stop it. We are beautiful in our own 
Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and listen to this. Absolutely. Now, Love watch black women. <laughs> but here's the thing. Roses are beautiful, right? But so are sunflowers. And so are tulips. And so are daisies. There's all sorts of different flowers that are beautiful. We're just a different beauty. And even right. if, now watch this. Even if, you know, roses are the thing, right? On, on Valentine's Day, but you want to get roses, right? Everybody mm -hmm. wants roses. That's kind of like the white woman. Even if everybody wants the white woman, even if everybody wants the biracial woman, daisies are daisies are still beautiful, aren't they? Right. They're right. Still oh, beautiful. I, and, and that's so, and, and, right. and the thing is this. The problem is this. Regardless of what, if you're a daisy or if you love daisies, you're never going to force a person that loves roses to love daisies. That's their preference. That's what and they like. And that's okay. Let them go and do whatever they want to do with what they, if they don't care for you anyway, don't worry about what they believe. Exactly. Come to the people that like daisies. Advertise to people who like daisies. Don't sell nothing to somebody that doesn't want the product. And let me make this point before I forget it. Okay. Okay. So, we know we have the regular Olympics, right? The Olympics mm -hmm. that we have like every four years. And then we have what's called the Special Olympics, okay? Right. Those are people that are physically or mentally disabled. We have the Special Olympics. When, when, when black women are out here talking about, um, what do they call it? They say um, black girl magic and melanin and queen and all these things. What we don't understand, we look like the Special Olympics. We're trying to force people to, 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 to make us the standard, it looks like the Special Olympics. We give applause to the Special Olympics. They can't touch the real Olympics because they're special. When we try to force everybody to love us and, and melanin and queen and all that kind of stuff, it's like we're showing that we have a deficit, right? Can white mm. women go around and say that they're queens and 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 um pale magic and all these are when we try to force that you you're showing that we're at a deficit when we're not we're not at, stop you don't see Asians talking about Asian queen and Asian goddess and and melon and all this stuff. we need to stop this we're doing that because we're trying to compensate because we see ourselves as lower and it's heartbreaking. We are not the Special Olympics. We're not. Stop it. We're putting ourselves in that category, right? When you're trying to force. There was one year. You you I don't, yeah, you you talking right now, Nyla? Go ahead, keep yeah, going. There was one year, and I and, and I'll be honest, I don't remember the year, but in this one year, it was a black woman that was Miss America. She was Miss Universe. She a black woman won all the different. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I know exactly. I remember there exactly was, what you're talking there about. There was one year. And essentially what that did, and the black women were just, yeah, 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 we won all these categories. Essentially that was given to us. That's like giving that special ed kid the prize. You know what I mean? And, oh, and we're talking and, about, yeah, we get participation medals. <laughs> yes, we were given because we keep shouting about how we're not happy with our position. Essentially, the judge in those competitions gave us that because we kept shouting it. Do you really want that? I don't want that. What? And here's the thing. That's why this is a, as a woman's mindset. I don't want a participation award. If they always give a white woman or whatever the, the titles or whatever, what do I care? I don't care if that's who they feel is the most beautiful. What do I care? God made me this way and I'm truly okay with myself. So I don't want to force everybody to see me as beautiful or, or, or to see me as, as the standard. I, I don't care. God made me this way and I'm completely comfortable because God made variability in us. And that's okay with that. Even if the world doesn't necessarily see your kinky hair and your dark skin as the standard, what do I care? My creator made me this way. Man's going to see what they see as beautiful. If, if, if most man sees white women as more beautiful, I don't care. What does that matter? Because my husband... And you met you. You heard his voice, poor man's podcast. Yes, say, she, let me go ahead and say this again for the new people that came in. <laughs> I've spoken to Nyla on uh, multiple occasions off of live. Um, I am helping her get her channel up. 
She has a husband. She's a black woman. She has a husband. She has uh, two two boys, right? I believe, right? Two boys. Yes, yeah, two boys. She has two boys. She has natural hair. So anything that she's talking about right now, from what I can see, me personally, because y'all know I don't BS over here. I try to give everybody that authentic. All right, I don't BS, and everything that she just said has been checking out for her. So I mean, right. So it, my it, y'all husband, can't y'all can't deflect now. So for everybody that's gonna say, oh, she's not black as an excuse to not listen to what she got to say, or she's not this, or she's not married, or she's a this is a woman that's married. All the things that people say they want to be, women say they want to be. Sometimes this is a woman that is all of that. So she's 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 gotten the stamp for sure. Right. So so basically, the way I feel, my husband that has been with me, he took me on. So he's my covering. My husband makes sure that me and our children are taken care of. Care of. My husband makes sure that I'm okay. So if my husband is over me and protects me, what do I care about a standard of beauty? My husband that took me as his wife believes that I am beautiful. So why would I care about what society thinks. I don't care. They every, every Miss America, Miss Universe can be a blonde haired, blue eyed woman. What do I care? My husband loves me. He loves my natural hair. He loves me. And so that's why I wish a black woman will understand who cares if you're the standard when your mm. husband loves you. My When he married me, he vowed to make sure that I'm taken care of. And so I wish black women would focus on that. Focus on your husband, not society cares. Right. I, I think white women are beautiful. They are. They're, they're gorgeous, I think. Because it shows the diversity that God has created in us. When look at dogs, look at birds. Some birds are blue, some are red, some are some are brown, all different colors and shapes and sizes. And so same in humans. Some are white, some are black. We're all beautiful. Honest and, and, and if you don't think black is beautiful, that's okay too. But at the end of the day, my husband thinks I'm beautiful. That's all that bingo. Matters. Bingo. Uh Nyla. We on for we've been at two we two hours and twenty minutes oh in. I'm gonna goodness. go ahead and I'm oh gonna go ahead goodness. and call this one. This was a great yes, show. I need to have you on. Okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. We got we got Leo, but hold on. Let's see what Leo gotta say real oh quick before God. we go. Let's see, Rio, we uh, Leo, we gotta make it quick. She got a husband to tend to. I got a wife to tend to. I've been going for too long. Let's see, let's see. All right, What's going on, Leo? Real quick, I, number one, uh, uh, definitely um, hidden. Per- Hidden Perspective Podcast, and I and, and we'll, we'll talk more. Hidden Perspective Podcast is my YouTube. Hidden Perspective Podcast, Nyla. So I, my friend on another platform, you know, I uh, was listening in, and she said some women need need to be led led by men. They, and she called you a beta. She called you a beta woman. How, yeah, she used, she said Ridiculous. she's she's alpha. She's alpha. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you this just from off the rip. I, I invited her on. She, she, did, she, she if I'm gonna tell you, wait, it, say something. Uh, she, uh, here's the thing. I, uh, J- Leo, truly, I don't care. This is what we hear all the time. Okay, yeah. there's always some kind of excuse for why a woman shouldn't be this way. And this is why I say to women, your biggest problem right now ain't men. Your biggest problem is other women that think you're weak for wanting to be a woman for a man. It's that simple. Right. And, and, and I'm so sick of seeing it. I'm so I, Nyla, don't even bother about that. That's that's gonna come. I, people yeah, are gonna I, be I, hating I, saying I got you. No, I see Leo, you just the messenger. But like these people, man, we get man, I'm so sick of hearing that message. I didn't heard that so many times. Anytime a woman come on and say something that's productive and talking to, having the hard conversations that we need to have, they start saying, Oh, so, she's just a pick me and she's a this and this and that. <laughs> well, she's married. With two kids. Right. I don't- I'll, I'll say this to your friend, and I'm going to use the words of what we call Godfather. I don't call him that. But I will yeah. say to her, if you are an alpha woman, then buy a dog and die alone. Bingo. And enjoy so being an alpha. Bingo. I wish I had the dog the dog button. <laughs> <laughs> buy, buy a dog and die alone and enjoy, my dear. That's all I got to say. Oh, man. That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Nyla, so if we want to, I want to make it very, very clear. 
A woman's place is a right, healthy. Leo, one more second. We got we got three minutes though, Leo, because we okay. got the. It, it oh yeah. So let's make it quick because I'm, I'm going to go through some questions. A woman's place is a help me, right? All Absolutely. women, right? Okay. Absolutely. So her purpose, her purpose on the universe is man, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, when, do you think? And and this was a question that um the women in 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 back in the day they were asking on the streets. Do you think that uh, women's education, their systematic education, interferes with them being a a a, a wife as well? I, I will say this, and so I'll be honest, I only have an associate's degree. Okay. And unfortunately, in, we in Western society, we believe that you only can get education if you have that that those letters by your name. But our, our Western education is extremely tainted. It's a very liberal, feminist <laughs> type of education that you're getting. I know this sounds insane, but believe it or not, you can actually educate <sighs> yourself without the letters you know, beside your name. So a lot of times what happens is women get these degrees, their masters, their PhD, and it, it makes it very difficult for them to get real true wisdom because they have this piece of paper. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, right. Absolutely. So, I want to say this though. What, what, okay. uh, poor man, you remember the video that you were breaking down with the, uh, the, the man that was in the streets in the 19th, 70s or 60s and he was asking people questions so if you guys if you look at that uh video on on feminism in on his channel uh, mm -hmm. of, of of yeah and, and just women, go in they depth. were basically it was a man or it was it might have even been a woman interviewing uh women on yeah. their opinions of the uh feminist movement back in the 1960s or 70s when it was still young Right. And then if you go into the related videos, what you'll find is more videos in women. Uh, there was a woman that didn't even have a, a, um, a, a, a kindergarten education versus a woman who had a college education. And she spoke so well in, in comparison, this woman that was educated. And she said she said, actually, I feel that you women clutter your mind. Your mind gets too cluttered when you're involved in that and your mind should be more free. You should be uh, uh, you should be more free and feminine and you should be able to uh, mix with others. And when you get that type of systematic education, you are unable to mix with others. It was beautiful, y'all. It's beautiful mm. content. I encourage you guys to look at the women in the 60s and what they were doing. I don't care if they white, black. We don't that. None of does. None of that matters. Just get the message. Um, and and if I can add, add this to this, um, I, I definitely respect people that get their education. I think that's an awesome thing. So I'm definitely not right. putting that down. But you do have to understand. You have to take that with a grain of salt because right. there's a certain amount of indoctrination that comes along with that degree that you're getting and that you paid for. I, I, I respect people. I respect wisdom. And there there is no degree or, or letter behind your name that can replace true life wisdom. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that's very important. And the unfortunate thing is a lot of these women out here, once they get that degree, that piece of paper, they automatically assume, okay, I've made it. That's it. But wisdom is totally, is totally separate from just pure education. Marrying that's, degrees, Nyla, marrying yes. degrees. That's what so a, many women are doing nowadays. It's a good thing and, and, and great that you got it. It's great. But there's a thing called wisdom. And that right. no. that is through life experience. That's through years. That's from list. Like even podcasts like this, people who are listening to this, you're gaining wisdom if you listen and accept it. No, no one's going to give you a piece of paper and make you feel good about yourself. But there's wisdom to be gained. But right. the, so, uh, because of the a woman's mind is very scattered, we think that once we get that piece of paper, I know everything now. And so unfortunately, it cuts off wisdom for a lot of them. They can't right. intake any more information because I've got my paper now, so no one can tell me anything. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off like this. Y'all know I'm about the fast and statistics. Um, for the difference between knowledge and wisdom, there's a saying. Okay, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is knowing knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. You get where I'm going. So, um, uh, and, and when we're talking about education, we're talking about 66 percent of the debt is accrued by women because and and, and and what they don't understand is that 49 or about 50 percent of people right now graduating degrees are five years after having those degrees. They're either unemployed or working in jobs that don't require the degree in the first place. So a lot of people are getting these degrees and then 
what that does is they don't un understand the difference between a fruit uh, for between a tomato and a fruit salad. They go and say, well, I have a degree. So that automatically makes me want a man that is also quote unquote educated. But most black men are working class men. We're very blue collar men. So off the rip, you're, you're cutting off about 30% of your dating pool, 40% of your dating pool, because most, most black women, uh, men are, are just, are, we're, we're blue collar guys. So it, these, these ideas and, and we get into 70% of professional women are single. 70% of women who identify as professional are single. So, and I mean, it, we could just keep going with the facts and statistics, but the truth of the matter is a lot of people are just accruing a lot of debt when they go to college, especially if they don't know what they're actually doing. So, yeah. I mean, that whole, most I'm enrolled, really, most enrolled it, in their head right now, they're thinking we're winning. Yo, you guys are you guys are spending 80, 80 plus 80 uh, 80 cents out of the dollar. You guys, you had your your student loan debt and, and even the, the woman Coco, like they're not paid. They have no intentions of paying their loans back. It, it's I believe it's 400 billion in student loan debt. They're responsible for like 80, 80 of, uh, of that. So it's like, um, hello, you guys oh, are man. not winning in these. Go ahead, Nala. What I got to jump in here, right here. And so here's yeah. the problem because you have all these women. And so what, what do women do when they are confused and they don't know what's going on? They go to school and they go to school because the government is going to give them student loans. It can help them pay for their bills. And so what happens is they come into submission to the government and not their men. And so when you have politicians like our current president that says, hey, we're going to forgive your student loans, and they lie to us and they tell us, we're going to forgive you. What does the black woman do? We vote for those people that lie to us and say, all those student loans you have, we're going to forgive forgive them. Uh, have the student loans been forgiven? No. But the woman's they won't mind, be. we go for that and so that's how they manipulate us because they a woman's mind is easily manipulated they don't they instead of actually being under su submission to a man oh i'm gonna go to school and i can do this they, they get into thousands and thousands of dollars in debt for 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 crap degrees and then they vote for politicians that will lie to them and tell them that they're going to erase the debt and this is where we are now Fellas, wow. it's very important. I got to say this because this is a rule that we need to get. We, we need to let this sizzle in our spirit for real, for real. Gentlemen, women have this beautiful it, uh, it ability to not break cold without even knowing that they're not breaking cold. Yep. They sit there and defend. They yep. will defend BS and be like, well, I personally don't you know, agree, but you know, I respect what she's saying. Men, you have to start respecting each other. We have to do better. Women are not gonna take us serious if we don't have the respect for each other. We have to start talking to each other, approaching each other. If you're not gonna work with that, the people that you work with, this is a brother of mine and I got major respect for him. We have to start letting it be known that we love each other and that we respect each other. Women do this very, very well. And they don't even know they're doing it. They defend bullshit yes. and don't even know it. Let me say this. Yeah. And this is just for me being a woman for so long. Women will not break code. They won't do it. Because when you do what I'm doing right now, I can tell you right now, I don't have a female friend. I don't. Mm -hmm. and, and as much as I desire female friends, I'm unable to because I'm breaking code. And so women, because of our emotional nature, we don't want to do this. So the reason why you will have women defending the garbage of other women because we have a desire to be liked and be accepted. Mm -hmm. to, to, to take the stance that I'm taking, I have to accept the fact that I will be rejected by everybody. And most women are not going to do that because that's not how we're built. Right. And we need to understand right. that women will, women will defend garbage. You have women out here defending bonnets. And, and, and all this ridiculousness because we won't break code. But like I said, to break code like what I'm doing, you have to be okay with being on your own and by yourself. And that's a tough thing because women were not built like that. We're communal. We need acceptance. So right. this is tough. Now, the, field sucks. the field sucks for us as men, single men that, that are that are Henry's, men that are that are working class men. It sucks because when, and I get a lot more opportunities than other, and I'm and, and I'm by no means the, the most handsome man out here, but I do get a lot of opportunities because I'm a social media influence and in, in fitness and stuff like that. And 
these women that 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 I interact with, they are not serious. They're not serious about um, aiding in men's legacies. They're serious about their own agenda. Yep. So what I did was, you know what I did? I said, fuck, I'm going to just do what Tyler Perry did. And I'm going to I'm going to bank off this. I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm going to start making money, become a social media influencer, also do consultations on saying, ladies, well, this is the if a man is not doing such and such, I don't think you should be pursuing him. So I, I started uh, uh, des okay. designing a way yeah, to okay. make to make money to uh, to benefit because what I've seen in the dating market is they are not serious at all. Uh, the way I would approach a a, 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 a woman is I want to know from jump, and they're like, "Yo, you're you're so you're way too serious. What do you mean? Like I can get in I can get in your pants in three in two days, but you're talking about I'm serious because of the conversation that we're having. Like that I could have potentially gave you a child, and you don't even know how much money I make. Why would you do that, woman? I'm too serious. I'm trying to help you out. I'm the guru mm. here. And you don't right. even want to take the information because you're like, well, I just want to enjoy the vibe, you know, and, you know, go with the flow. You're women. You are helping men by saying, you know what? I'm going to be patient. Take my time here. You are helping men get get some on uh, in on in the back door by you because we can be patient with you. A man that really wants you goes full throttles and he goes to great leaps to get you. I promise you that. He will go to great leaps to get you if he's if he's not. But don't also don't also think that you qualify for this particular uh, um, man that is that is a hard worker. When when your ass is you've already made your special spot, not special. It becomes just a spot once you have let people hit that special spot. It, it's not as valuable. And we know it's not as valuable because we see your kids and we see that you didn't value marriage. We see that you had no standards put on your life. And, and we can see that as men. And we know when we know when we're talking to a Jezebel because we can't shame you. You guys speak openly about sex. Men, beware of women that speak openly about sex over these social media apps. All right. I, can I jump in here, yeah. too? Absolutely. Um, if I, I can if I can suggest to men, um, use the tools that are available to you. I grew up in an era. <laughs> it sounds crazy. But I grew up in a time at, at one point there were no cell phones. There was no internet and social media. So, but you guys have this now. So when you meet a woman and 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 she's in your sites, share with her poor poor man's podcast. Share with her Kevin Samuels and see her authentic reaction to it. If she sees this sort of content and she's like, what are they talking about? This is horrible. Move on. If, if she doesn't understand this, move on. We didn't have this. Like I said, I, I, I mean, Kevin Samuels is older than me, but I'm 43. We had not, we had to do this raw and had to figure this stuff out. Use the tools. You have a whole manosphere now. Mm. Take the woman out, show her this, show and see her true reaction. And if she, if she's not into it, if she's like, no, this is crazy, move on. Don't waste your time. And, and another, can I add this too? And I know this is kind of like on the side, but men, stop spending all this money on these fancy dates to impress these women. Listen, if, listen, if you are serious and you really are looking for a wife that's going to be on your team, she should be, matter of fact, she should be thrilled. If you want to take her on like a picnic or like a, a, a walk on a trail or 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 may, heck, go out for some coffee, in, in in my mind, I would like that more in you. Um, you if go. you did that, stop doing this, men. Because if you spend all this money on the women and she's impressed by that, you got to keep that up. Do you understand? Listen. And a, and another oh. thing, for just for the women out there, if you got a man that that you you know he ain't all the way there yet in terms of his finances, and he wants to take you on a very expensive date, you got a question: What's his focus? Because every man yeah. in, in 2021, regardless of if you want to believe it or not, finances are very important for for you getting to your purpose. So uh, judge a man based on his financial decisions. If he doesn't have a car but he has a four hundred dollar pair of shoes, there may be something wrong. Maybe you don't commit your life to him. I don't know. Hey, I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell another Nyla, one of my little stories. Nyla, poor man. I want to oh. make sure I say this before, before I forget it. Remember, y'all. Nyla said it first. 
it, you know, everything that a woman says is trash. And I put it in context, though, because y'all can go Unless back and Unless she's in submission to a man. Add Unless that. Don't yeah. forget that. Exactly. I'm not saying, I'm saying, in, in, I'm in full submission to a man. So no, that's the reason why, why right. the mm-hmm. reason why I brought, the reason why I brought that up, fellas, because we, we are so duped in on the pretty and we have to go away oh, from that. Boy. The pretty, the body, oh, and, and we lust. This is why I say, like, we should, oh. we got to stop lusting yes. after these women. They don't, yes. at this point, they don't even deserve to be. I was yes. just looking like, uh, like a woman that left her kid in a house uh, to, to go, you know, hundred, a uh, hundred miles away to go get some from a man and her child died. Like these women, these are the type of women that we are having babies with fellas. It's on us. We are the leaders of this nation. I said it once. I say it a million times. This thing is dictated off us men. Get mm. m- stand up. Be men. Be aggressive. Be assertive. Be innovative. They will get on this train. I promise you. As as, yes. re- as ruthless as I am with my content, women flood my inbox and want to date yes. with me. Absolutely. I'm, okay, poor man. Let me let me yeah. jump in. So, poor man, you've seen me, right? So yeah, you know, I've seen you. We- we just I'm not talked obese. earlier on FaceTime. Live I'm chat. not obese, right? You're I'm not I'm, obese. I'm not, I'm not trash and like, you know, a zero. You've seen that, right? Not at all. Okay. So let me say this. And so this was back, back. I met my husband 17 years ago. And One so second before you start oh, now, because yeah, it's the story yeah, time, right? It's story time? It's story time. I'll tell a story. A quick story. Leo, let me go ahead. We got a, a cup, one more person up in here. I think we're going right. to get one more person. We've been there. I know I said I was going to got two, three men. I know yeah, my wife go. got, I know she texting me, typing up. Let me get, <laughs> let me go ahead, Leo. Let me get one more person in here. Nyla, I do want to hear your story time. Appreciate you, Leo. You know, it's always love. Uh, Marissa, I did want you in here, but Nyla, go ahead and give your story time quick. And then Marissa, I want to get into what you, uh, what you wanted to say. Go ahead, uh, Nyla. Just a quick story so that men can t- grasp what I'm saying. Okay. So like I said, me and my husband, we met 17 years ago. I- I'm not going nowhere. So when we was dating, like I said, we didn't have all this information we had. So my husband wanted to impress me. So we were, we were in California at the time. And so there was a nice restaurant at that time called Crustaceans. And Crustaceans was a really nice restaurant. They had the fish, you know, how like, like you walk on the ground and like the fish were in the, and were in the ground. You know what I'm talking about? And so we went there and, and, and uh, he ordered the, uh, the lamb chops and I ordered and the <laughs> lobster salad. He was trying to impress me. We left that restaurant hungry and we ended up after he spent well over a hundred a hundred dollars. That was back, you know, 17 years ago. He spent over a hundred dollars. We had to go to the McDonald's drive through because we were still <laughs> hungry. And I told him right then, I said, that's not who I am. I said, I, I want to eat. You don't have to impress me with fast, fancy restaurants. It, I don't want you to waste your money. And so what I'm saying to men, if you have to do all that to impress her, you're going to still have to do that. Here I am 17, 17 years later. I'm still here. He don't have mm. to take me to no fancy restaurant. He don't have to do all these things and black flips to impress me. I believe in being smart. If you spend a hundred dollars over a hundred dollars at a restaurant and then we still gotta go to a McDonald's to get full, <laughs> that's foolish. So man, stop it. If you gotta do that to impress her, you gotta do that to keep her. Stop it. Okay, I'm done. That was my story. All right, Marissa, just real quick, we probably got another five minutes. I just wanted to let you go ahead and say what you wanted to say quick and Oh, okay, so thank you for uh, having me on. I'm sorry, I was laughing at your story because I had the exact same experience as crustacean. I was taken there for my 30th birthday. It was so oh. beautiful. And we <laughs> left just as hungry as we came. I was so upset. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but what I wanted to really talk about was is that um, I, I appreciate your, your content. I watch you every day. Um, the thing about modern women and what we are missing is we have forgotten that it is one of the greatest honors to be in service to another person. Yes, Um, Yes, ma'am. And that's just the bottom line. When you have these women calling in and they're like, he has to be six feet and make six figures and do this. And then the question comes, then what are you going to give him? And then you hear crickets. Well, the answer really is service. 
to be in service to another person is the greatest thing that you can do. To know that as a as a husband, to know that Thank you're going to you. come home yes. every day, your home will be clean, your children will be safe and cared for, and and being educated. You're going to have food in the refrigerator and on the table. You know, your clothes are going to be ironed. You don't have to get up in the morning searching for drawers in the other sock. Like, no, it's, <laughs> it's right there, baby, right there. You know, yes, and for a woman to be able to trust that that man is really getting up at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., whatever, and leaving the home to go to work for you and your family. And that when it's time to take pay bills, He's not looking all around in the rafters like where the money coming from. He's like, boom, checkbook. I got that. We're right. We're doing that. That's right. a trust that and, and that's and, people understand. And that's I wanted to just say, uh, just from a man's perspective, and this is why I preach to the guys that come on the channel. One of the best things you could do, one of the most fulfilling things you could do as a man is find a responsibility, especially a woman or and or children, and to take care of them. I, there is nothing that makes me feel better than being able to take my wife somewhere she wants to go, uh, buy her something she wants, um, uh, be able to love her. It, it's just a, a, I get fulfillment in and of myself when when my mother needs some help and I'm able to do that. When uh, when my little sisters need, that's what I get fulfillment from as a man. Um, and and to me knowing my role as a man and and me understanding that yes, that service even if you got to get up to work for somebody else and able to be able to do those things for your family. When you get to do those things for your family, there's nothing that'll make you feel more better. It, it's, oh it's just nothing that makes you feel better. My husband calls me and his sons his why. That's that's the thing you hear in business. Life. We're his why. He's my husband worked hard. I mean, he works hard, but he always we are his why. He is why does what he does, and that's how it's supposed to be. His why. So I asked him, "What is your why? What's your why? Why do you get up and do what you do? Are you going to do it for a woman that's disobedient, and out of control? He does it for us." Because he knows that we love him and he's he he's in charge over us. And so he does it gratefully to you know what I mean? Man, mm -hmm. and I feel sad because so many women are missing. They this. are. And you exactly. know, the other, the other thing is you can have a man that really is out here working hard for you. Oh Nyla, you cutting out a little bit. Can't really hear you. Um Okay. okay I'm, I'm, let me move. I kind of moved. Okay. I got it. Oh. I'm, I'm okay. Um, I just wanted to say very quickly, I know you're out of time, but also in that idea of service, you know, yeah, you might be making a hundred K, but you still broke, you know, women need to be looking for a man that understand the word savings. Mm. Oh, thank you. Oh boy. Good, good oh, boy. credit. Uh, Investments. Have you yeah, ever heard yeah. of these things? Yes. <laughs> Property Ownership, management. property. We <laughs> talked about that earlier. Right? Liabilities. We talked about that earlier, yes. And the thing is, is that that discipline that you you have between you and, and your wife, that discipline to, to be able to do all of those things is the service that you're doing for your children so that when they become of age, you mm. know, and they're saying, I have these dreams, mom and dad, Mom and dad's not looking at them like, well, I don't know what you're going to do. But mom and dad are saying, you know what? We've been saving so that you have something to start with. That's We've been right. saving That's so right. you have something to, you know, carry on. And, and, that, and, um, and, and Marissa, the one thing I've always noticed between successful people and not successful people is successful people are willing to sacrifice the now for the future. So oh they're willing boy. to not go and buy the thing that they want now because they know that uh, that that money is going to disappear and is not going to be available anymore. But if you set it aside, it will bring more money to you in the future. So sacrificing now for the future is the biggest thing for men ever. And that goes to building your legacy. That goes to providing for your family. It, it's just understanding that simple sacrifice mm -hmm. now for later. Understanding I gotta that say this, in and of this itself. Is, this is my husband's phrase. He says, pay now and play later or play now and pay later. If that Bingo. makes sense, mm -hmm. you, you, you need to pay now 
then later on you can reap the benefits if that makes sense. But what, unfortunately, the black community right now, we're a little bit backwards. We want to play now, but you're going to pay later for sure. Yeah. And, and we don't yes. see we don't see the um the value in in saving and we don't see the value in putting something aside for your kids. When I graduated high school, my grandmother handed me two thousand dollars in cash and it was like twenties, wow. fives, ones, tens, just beautiful. Honestly, I was like, Grandma, you got a, a secret job as a cocktail waitress because <laughs> <laughs> And she was like, she said, no, I'm giving it to you like this because I need you to understand that we've been saving for a very long time. And even when we only had a dollar, we put that dollar in the box. That's right. When we had 10, we put 10. And what you are holding in your hand is a, a culmination of that saving no matter what. And yeah. that that meant so much to me because it said to me three things. Number one, you care. <laughs> but number two, you had a vision for me that I was going to, to grow up and want to be something and want to achieve something. And you believed in that so much that, that you started saving mm. years, a decade even mm. prior so that I could do that. And that's what wow. that said. Awesome. And I, I think many people miss that whole idea. They just think it's like giving the kid free money and they're going to go off and do whatever. No, you're giving your, your child confirmation that you always knew they were going to grow to be something good. And, wow. and great. You know, and, and just to that's add to that, that's, real that's, quick, that's huge when you say it that way. That's huge. Just to add to that, it's okay if you do not come from that. I left home at 18 with mm -hmm. nothing. So w even if you didn't have that built in, you can start your own legacy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't given anything, and that's okay, but I know I can start it here. You know, I can start it with my own family. Even if you're only passing down just a little bit, it's okay. Unfortunately, we have this thing in the black community where we want to kick our kids out right at 18 and we want them to know what it's like to struggle. A lot of other races don't do that. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to do that. You can make the change in your family right where you are. Even though I was not given an education, all these things, I can start with my boys and we can create the legacy right here, right? We can do mm -hmm. it. Even if you didn't have that yourself, you make the change. Very much so. The young woman um, that came on before me, uh, she was, I think she said Middle Eastern and how she mm -hmm. explained um, everyone has a role in the household. You know, it's not just black society that's missing that. It's Western society as a whole. And I grew up on a street that was like a mini UN, Japanese, Korean, Indian, Nigerian, you name it. I saw if it was there. And what I learned and understood was that everybody in the family had their role and had their purpose. And no one left the family unless they were leaving for the betterment of the family. So that meant right. work, education, marriage, mm. period. And, and that's what they did. They lived together. They saved their money together. They trained their children to take over their homes and to take over their businesses. And when right. the child turned 18, guess what? You still the child. You're, you're right. not leaving the house just because you're 18. It was unheard of. And um, my mother divorced my sister's father when I was 24, leaving university. I came home from university. And just to show you the, the drastic dynamic, right? The American friends and family were saying to me, well, you don't have to go home. You graduated college. You should start living your life. What? You know, you don't have to just stay a couple of months and, you know, help out. My grandmother looked at me and said, your sister is four. You have a 20 year difference. Whatever goes wrong with her is going to be your fault because you have a chance right now to step in and help. And my Korean and my Japanese neighbors said to me. Home. Is where you belong right now. You help your mother. You help your mm. sister. 
and and then when they better, they help you. Here's don't, the thing, um, and, and just kind of. And just kind of going into that a little bit, I am going to cut it off a little short just because we are going to, I'm going to try to wrap this up here. Um, but uh, I do agree. I think that right now we are in a, a position where a lot of people are very, very selfish in what they want to do. They don't want to save themselves for later because grat instant gratification and they want it now, now, now. Uh, we have men that don't want to do the hardship of finding a woman that is marriable, be, you know, Meg Tao, and I'm not against Meg, uh, Meg Tao. I get it. I, I understand some of their ideas, but um, it is going. It, it is the most selfless thing you can do uh, to find a good woman. I understand it's hard, whatever y'all say, it's hard, but to find a good woman and, and secure that future for your children, because a lot of uh, a guy came on and he was like, I don't want to get married, this and this and that. Uh, because it's not for me. And I was like, well, what about your child? And and, and then that's when he kind of understood what I was saying. And that and that comes with a lot of selflessness. Putting money aside for your children, that comes with selflessness. And unfortunately, a lot of people seem to be selfish in today's society with instant gratification. But I appreciate you, Marissa, for coming on. I'm going to go ahead and get you out so we can close this up. I really appreciate you. All right, Nyla. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, it was a good one. Hey, I got to have you back on. We are going to get your channel up and running ASAP. We got to drop content. I don't care if you want to have me on yours. Uh, yeah. We can do a live on yours. I can send people there that way. I'm going to link you in, uh, in the videos that I drop. Um, I'm going to add your channel in, in the video. So you'll get a lot of um, notoriety and you probably have from just this oh, small really? session I that did, we've done I did, today. Um, 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 sub subscribers, like I don't even have any content. I have like one video. So yeah. um, yes, thank you very much. Uh -huh. But I appreciate you for coming on and sharing the ideas with the rest of the brothers. I'm sure they appreciate it. Um, and and uh, I'll see you guys. I, I thank y'all for listening and being very respectful to especially the women that were on the channel. Um, I, I appreciate you guys for listening. Uh, I'll talk to y'all next time. All right. Till next time. <laughs>